we go. We're live. We're now welcome to the NHL Live, our very first one. It's kind of hey, cool. Everyone. Yeah. This is Rye, is Ty from Seaway Sports Lounge. We're going to be doing some live coverage of the NHL draft. We're going to give our thoughts. We're going to see what we think. Now, Typhoon's got the television in front of him, so he's able to see it. I might, I might do is from time to time, I'll bring up the um bring up the tracker on my screen here if we can find an nhl tracker for this do you have anything like that typhoon or uh nothing nothing yet but uh they're just i think they're still preparing everything yeah the nhl draft hasn't started yet but it'll be interesting to see but i'm gonna see if i can go out like i don't know if you can go on your phone or whatever and see if you can actually see our actual oh yeah i'll test it so anyway, so anyway, we're going to talk more about the draft and obviously all about the draft tonight. So, so welcome. And this is an exciting time for Habs fans. I mean, they get the first overall pick a few years ago. My team, Toronto Maple Leafs, they had their first overall pick. So, um, pretty interesting that they uh, they get to try it out now. Obviously, Shane Wright and yeah, there it is, it's showing up on our. Uh, yeah, I even got a page. notification on my phone. Uh, yeah, perfect. Let me turn that down. <laughs> I don't want to hear myself. It's good. So, hey, so Shane Wright, uh, Slavkovsky, all kinds of names floating around. So, Typhoon, what do you have for it? Do you have anything, uh, anything new or outstanding for that? Uh, not yet. Still waiting to for the draft to start. They just seem to be uh, just conversing about the players and what direction they think. Oh, we got someone go to the podium now. Oh, we have our first. Looks like the first choice is about to happen. Well, it's uh, it's Gary Benton gonna say who gets the first pick, and he's getting the wonderful boo. <laughs> well, I would say that that or we have a trade. You're all gonna want to hear this. Yeah, Bonsoir Montreal. <laughs> really? Oh, is he trying to speak French? Way. <laughs> he is, eh? <laughs> Uh, so I had to say it like that. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's okay. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm making fun, but good for him for trying. It's just his his New York accent is very, very rough. Oh, is it ever? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We're gonna have to figure out. I mean, sorry we're mentioning this on the live feed, but we're still new to this, so we'll have to figure out a way to get this to other people later on so we only have the seaway sports lounge group which is 19 people that are able to see this feed right now but either way it's just our first one so we'll go from there but this is fun i can't wait to see how this works it's yes we forgot to talk about that what's that the passing of brian marchman oh yes well we'll get into that after the once they start the clock there, we'll talk about that. Yeah. We'll talk about Brian Marchman because he I think he played on both our teams. I know he played for Matron. Uh, no, he was never a Hab, but I I remember him back when he played with the Oilers and they were – it was Ulanov, it was him, it was Manson, and it was the both the Miranov brothers. And how do you get through that D? And then you have to deal with Joseph. Yeah, I know. <laughs> interesting i don't know we'll see he was good good player he was great in toronto i mean he was not great I mean, he was awesome i liked his style he was tough he threw a lot of it's, body checks he got a lot of penalties for toronto so it's sad he was very young yeah, 53 53 years old you said heart attack right that's that's what i that's what they suspect because he was found in his hotel room I, he also he also played in an era where meds and alcohol were very, very common. Yes. Oh, yeah. And, and I mean, let's be honest. These guys are tough on their bodies. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm just going on the thing right now. See if we can invite a few people in here so they can kind of watch it if they want. I've been sending, uh, sending it out to a few people as well. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yes. So Montreal's getting the first pick. Shane Wright or Slakowski? 
We'll see what happens. My gut, Shane Wright. That's who's going. That's what I think, but well, we'll see. Let's see here. What else do we have? What's he saying now? What's he talking about? He's talking about the draft being held in Montreal, and the crowd's going crazy now. They booed him. They booed him five seconds before, and now that he mentions yeah, Montreal, but he said, then they all freak out. Their fans are like woo girls. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's be honest. They're they're yeah. They don't like him, and then they like what he has to say. I don't get it. As soon as they say like our school or our hometown, it's woo. But it, yeah. <laughs> when he walks up, it's boo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know, like like Kang and Kodos. Yeah, Kang and Kodos. Like on the Simpsons, <laughs> everyone knows the Simpsons. Yeah. I don't know whoever is out there watching the show. Who's watching? Yeah. A funny episode. I always enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be an exciting time, man. You're gonna like this. This is I know when Matthews was gonna be drafted in Toronto. I mean the rumors were so wild. I don't know. Have you heard any crazy rumors at all? Um I've I've heard that Ottawa's even kicking tires with the Brink Cat and <clears throat> They're very pushing to get uh, to get Drew too. Okay. Yeah, we're getting some comments now. We have someone saying, "What up, boys? Go Abs!" So inside EV Mux here, that's the software we're using, by the way. Or is that you doing that? Are I you didn't putting do that it. there. You didn't. Oh, someone's nope. posting comment. So big our our ignorance, everyone. But like I said, we're. <laughs> We're learning as we go. So, this is shiny cool. new. So, yeah, some shiny and new. Yeah, we're shiny new to this, but we're here and we're doing it. So, it's it's a lot of fun. So, not sure who that is, but I'll check uh, the Facebook group after there as we uh, go through it all. They have speakers right now for uh, before the draft. Oh, I figured there'd be some kind of fanfare or some kind of uh, official thing that's going to happen. They always do. Oh, Probably they're doing a same. no. They're doing a. Uh, it's a memorial for Mike Bossy. Oh, that's cool. For his that's passing. Nice. Yeah, fair enough. He's a Montreal. Oh, they're. It's one for Bossy and one for Lafleur. The two of them. Oh, Lafleur should be no. Yeah, it's, they died within what a week of each other. Two weeks. Yeah, same and both cancer. Uh, they both. Did you say they not smoke? <laughs> they smoked uh, to death. Oh, Lafleur. LeFleur used to smoke a bench from what my dad told me. Oh, really? Interesting. <laughs> huh. I, I can't picture that. I just can't picture that. So You know what? If you see Ovi drink Coke on the bench and Makar eat a cookie, I believe it. <laughs> we have... I don't want to pronounce... I don't want to... Uh, the name that... Uh, Dijon... Davinich? Dan. Dan, Dan Rad 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 Radovanovich. I apologize if I messed up the name, Dan. But I'm just checking the comments now. He's, he's posting. He's got the, uh, he's just saying, Debrin Cat went to Ottawa today. Go Habs. LOL. <laughs> At least you're having, <laughs> thanks for laughing. It's, I'm, I'm just, I'm seeing who's writing what. So, but it was just neat being live. Oh, so oh, everybody back. <laughs> oh yeah, Batman's back. All right, let's see if we have a trade. Did did you hear the booze? Oh yeah. I think I think Valleyfield heard them. We have another special guest. So just so you know, I'm looking at the feed. It's got we have two people watching right now, by the way. Anyway, we haven't said it said Batman's back. Batman's <laughs> the, the the closed caption they picked it up and said Batman's back. That's awesome. <laughs> I figured you'd like that. You're a big Batman guy. Oh, St. Louis is gonna be announcing, it looks like. Marty St. Louis, your new coach. He's minted to his new three year deal. Yeah, what do you think of Marty St. Louis? 
I like the guy. And I liked him even more when I found out that every prospect that talked to him all left saying, I want to play for this guy. Yeah, okay. That's fair. I I liked him as a player. I mean, he didn't play for any on my team, but he was always a formidable foe. But anyway, um, I I I don't think he has any pressure for the first at least the first two years of his contract. But I think they're going to bring somebody else in to help him. There's been chatter of that. I understand. Mm -hmm. He's interviewing ten people for his assistant job. As he should. I think they should bring in somebody that's more qualified. The man's never coached. Before. I thought. I thought at one point he was going to bring Torts in as his uh, as his associate, not I, just I assistant heard that too. associate. I heard that as well. He's got such a good image too. Yes. Yeah, he's very much Montreal. I not to be. I we had just, two chances to get that guy and we didn't. Yeah, I, I always thought Marty St. Louis would be a hab. I honestly did. I thought Montreal would pick him up maybe at the end of his career or maybe in the mid seat mid part of his time when he was about to get paid and become a big piece of your team. I honestly thought that was going to happen. When he first finished junior, he went to the Habs asking for a contract. They said no. He got his deal in Calgary. When they waived him, he was he called Montreal saying, "Would you pick me up?" They said no. And then he went to Tampa and became a superstar. Well. But now he's got the best job you could ever have being a Habs guy. Yeah. Yeah, we can't get the feed in here. Because if we do, so everybody understands. We tried this yesterday. We did do a little testing. And unfortunately, the feed gets a feedback loop. I'm, I have to read more about it. But if one day we could do that, it would be interesting to see if we can get that. To work. Be cool to have that. I love his words right now. He said, all of you that get your name selected today, congratulations. The rest of you, don't quit, don't give up, keep working. Right. Because he was undrafted. That's why he's saying yes. that. Oh, he was undrafted? I thought he was drafted. Und no, that's why he went to Montreal looking for a contract, because he was undrafted. Hmm. Interesting. Very cool. Well, now he's part of your organization. It's like Brendan Shannon with Toronto. Brendan Shanahan you know, was a player. Was, who's that? St. Louis. Oxbury. Really? Yeah, he played. Yeah. Was Bob Hartley his coach? <laughs> I wonder. Maybe. I think he. Because I thought he coached Oxbury for a little while. I, I but think I could he be did. wrong. I could be wrong, but I always, for whatever, he coached the Cornwall Aces. I know that he coached us for a season. We had the Aces back in the mid nineties. And, he, and, and the Aces were a great team. And then, right. And whenever Crawford moved on. He got the job, but he was his assistant. So that was cool back then when we had that team here. So if anybody who's watching, Cornell Ontario had a, an AHL team for three years, one of the some of the best hockey I've ever seen, and a lot of stars I got to watch. Unfortunately, so many good around, but that's okay. Oh, you go. Know, the Avalanche were stacked. Yeah, you know, we were always a playoff team, two rounds deep minimum. Congratulations to the Philadelphia Flyers for making the Colorado Avalanche. Really? <laughs> well, in that Lindros trade, basically. Oh, I know. That Lindros trade was insane. That was just absolutely they got, crazy. They got the Milan Hayduk and Chris Drury draft picks out of that trade. Oh, yeah? Yes, that's right. Yeah, we talked about that the other day. Yeah, that yeah. was a crazy, was a crazy trade. That would never happen now. Never. That would never occur that way. Oh, Montreal's on the clock. Okay, so here we go, everyone. Montreal's up. Uh, I'm going to see if we can find a tracker here. I think TSN has, an, has a draft tracker on their system. I can bring it up, and then if there's something every so often, I'll bring it up and I'll share my screen that we can see who's been chosen and see where everybody's in their draft choice, like where they list. So. Montreal Canadiens. Oh. We have a trade. No, we don't have a trade. I don't think there'll be a trade. They're choosing their player. Decision's been made. My kidney. I remember with Matthews, they everyone's like, oh, the people are like, oh, they'll trade him. They'll be no, no, we're not going to trade Austin Matthews. I'm sorry.
Sorry. No. Not, Matthew's not will only leave as a free agent, and even then, it's it's they're not going to let him walk just to walk. There's no way. Impossible. You will Impossible. not just give up on that guy. <clears throat> even no, if he was going to free agency and you wanted him for seven years, you'd still be trying to sign him. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I, they're not. Uh, they're not going to do that. There we go. So they're, so, they're being so they're being so suave right now. It's they're they're on the clock and they're all just sitting there. They're not even talking. Nothing. Just sit there. <laughs> there you go. So here's what we can put up. We can put this up for now. Sorry, folks, but there we go. That's the that's the trade tracker for TSN. So or sorry, the draft. So we can have this up for now. I'll bring this up every so often. So the first five picks are the Habs, Devils, Coyotes, Kraken, and Flyers. Do you, any of those five picks do you see moving Typhoon at all or no? You see Zona or Kraken? I don't see Zona trading a pick. They don't have anything. No way. Well, no, they don't really have anything. I don't see – Seattle did a lot of moves the only, already. Actually – I see the second pick potentially moved if Montreal selects Slavkovsky because New Jersey okay. does not need a centerman. They already have Hughes and they already have Heeshear. Right. They will they will move their pick to, to go for a winger. Okay, I can see that. I can see that very much. So. Then you have pick six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. You got the Jackets, Hawks, Red Wings, Sabres, Ducks, and Sharks, and then we'll so Jackets as we all are know, six and twelve too. Are they? Yeah. Okay. They may. Yeah. Uh, they may move to the two to move up. I don't know. Maybe they trade with yeah. Jersey. Well, Buffalo Sabers and then are nine. Selects, I could, yeah. And then, like someone like uh, like Jonathan Lekeri Mackey. Yes, as in our previous in our previous episode on our podcast that we were doing, we have uh, we talked about the top 10 players that are in the draft, and his name came up multiple times. So he's clearly going to go in the top 10. It's just a matter of where he's going to fit and who wants him. So so we'll leave this. I'm going to take this down for now, but um, I'm going to leave that. Well, Jeff Molson, Kent Hughes, Jeff Gorton, the whole crew is on stage right now. Okay, well, that means that they're going to draft someone. So Even Le Cavalier is there. I'm nervous, man. <laughs> Why are you nervous? Why would you be nervous? You're gonna get because I don't, don't know. You're not gonna get a bad player. Please think about that. I it's not like you're. I he's not gonna say. I still have. This is a legacy pick, you know, for this GM. This is. I understand that, but here's the deal. He's not gonna pick. I. It's hilarious to watch this because you just you're so antsy right now. <laughs> it's like I don't know. He's gonna, dude. He's gonna pick the best player available. Like, I know, but I want the center. You know that. You're gonna get the center. I'm telling you. Oh, here we go. Here we go. What's the bow? What is the drum roll? Drum roll, please. What are you saying? Here we go. Is it? Do you hear it? Yes, I can hear it. Oh my gosh. Did oh they my pick gosh. Slikovsky? They picked Slikovsky. Really? Uh huh. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my word. Well, there you go, folks. We have it live. That's there. You have a live Hab fan reaction right here. Wow. Okay. And so it was very mixed. It was very mixed in there. There was some boos and cheers. Oh, oh, interesting. Oh. Well. <laughs> okay. What are we doing for center now? Well, how about what do you think? Let's start there. 
not going to be a bad player, Typhoon. I'm telling you. I know not that, but be bad. it wasn't. You just got to. You just got to. I understand, but hey, you guys picked Carey Price. You didn't need a goalie. And you picked him. Look how that went. So I apologize for that. But, um, he's a star, a star-studded winger. Isn't that what he is? Told he's me. supposed to be. He's uh, projected to be a Rick Nash. Well, maybe they feel they have enough down the middle for now. I mean, regardless of what we think, they really know their team, their team better than we do. I mean, there's got to be something. Maybe there's a trade down the, in the mix or a UFA signing that they'll pick up or do. Maybe they'll get Kadri for all we know. He's going to be available. <laughs> you never know, right? Like, just to throw a name out there, there's lots of UFA centers out there. I know, but, but I didn't. I didn't think they wanted to go the UFA route if you're rebuilding. No, and that's just me talking. That doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying that there's a possibility that you know. I don't know. Nick Suzuki's so, wow. there in the, with the Habs too. Yeah, I mean, he's the face of the team now. So I mean, he's one of the faces. He's gonna, and he's part of your leadership group. So he's got to be there. See Suzuki there. You should see Caulfield there. You should see um, just Suzuki is with them. That tells me they might. He might be future captain. And how do you feel about that? Do you think he's a captain? Do you think he's captain material? One hundred percent. He already plays okay. like he's a. He's a, he already plays like a veteran centerman. And he's got the room. Mm-hmm. We, okay. We've got well, him hey. signed eight. We got him signed eight years. Yeah, you got a sweetheart deal for them. Seven million well, a year. A, that's a great. Uh, that's a great little contract for him. Like for his Montreal, best years. Montreal did really well in that contract. I'll give Kent Hughes full. Or was that Bergevin who signed it? Uh, Bergevin signed it. Bergevin. Okay. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go, folks. There you go. The first pick of the draft and Uri Slavkovsky to the Habs. Uri, he's going to the Habs. It's not Shane Wright. So obviously. They obviously didn't want the Devils to have him because we all know the Devils wanted him. Well, I have heard that the biggest, the biggest dispute the organization had was looking at from like three years down the road, which one will impact the team better. Okay. Oh, number two, selection number two. Yeah, there we go. So, Slykovsky. Slykovs- so Slav, wanna, which, Slav, 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 Slav Koski. Sorry, folks. Yes. Slav. I'll just call him that. <laughs> well, that's interesting. That's an interesting move, Mr. Hughes. You went off board right off the start. Everyone thought Shane Wright was going one, and but McKenzie was right, I think. Didn't you tell me that Bob McKenzie's list said he'd go first? Since like 2012, every first round select, first number one overall, he said, he's said, has gone first. Really? Yeah. Well. Oh, Chara sent him a congratulations video of being drafted first overall. Yeah. Interesting. That's a good, I don't know. Uh, Again, I don't know either players, so. Yeah. Huh. Well, anyway, first we'll Slovakian see. ever to go first overall. Oh, we got a. I'm just checking the comments here. So, my cousin Sean just wrote, didn't see it coming, but I ain't mad. LOL. Dan Hickey goes Slavkovsky with three exclamation. My Uncle Steve, it's a great show. This is, I love this. This is, uh, so far, so good. Thanks a lot for the comments, everyone. Thanks for the support. The support's been great with this. Um, just a little plug here. We do have a YouTube channel, and we do have a Spotify channel. So that way, if you ever want to have the links, we'll be posting them in. And if you want to subscribe to our channel on YouTube, we have just hit subscribe, hit likes to any of the videos if you like them. And hit the notification bell on the right side so that you know when whenever we post more stuff. We're hoping to do this some live. We're obviously going to do an unrestricted free agency one. 
uh, a few weeks from now, and then or a week from now, and then we're gonna do probably one a week. So lots of good stuff to come. Um, like I said, really happy that you guys are. Everyone who's uh, who's uh, supporting is there. So thanks again. Mm-hmm. Means a lot to us. Just two much, fans everyone. trying two two fans out for a chat. We decided this is what we were gonna do, and here we are on a live feed on Facebook and uh, and uh, doing these things. So I have to say, it looks like our program we have can only do one at a time, unless I'm not doing it right. So I'll have to read up on that more. But that's, okay. that's okay, as long as everyone has a link. But yep, that's, well, that's it. Yeah, that's right. And this is being recorded too, so. After this, I'm going to set up. I'm not even going to edit this. I'm just going to put it up like this and we'll put it up and put it up on our stuff and go from there. So, so Slokovsky. So, what do you think the Habs are going to do next, Typhoon? Now that they've selected, they have another choice in the first round. That's from the bench rod trade. Yes. Um, later in the draft, I guess they're going to go for that center, maybe, or a defenseman. I've heard they're very big on uh, Tristan Luneau. And what about him? Uh, left-hand defenseman. He had a great season this year for the. Uh, I think it was. I think it was the Olympic, maybe. Okay. But they went. They went. What they did well in the playoffs this year. Um, right. I have read up on Corey Pronman's list of prospects, and he has him at a below average for skating. So obviously, there's there's a project there. But uh, overall, he's he can put up points. He's got good. Uh, he's uh, he's apparently mobile and everything. But skating still, I probably just needs to work on his speed or something. Okay. Well, as we've said before, the bottom half of the first half of the round of the first round, you always you're always um, you're yes. Always it's always a project. Trouble. Yeah, project, project players, guys have some faults and some issues. So. The idea of a late round pick is to be. Two years to develop, or three years. Two to three years. Two to three years. Second round, you're even deeper. Third round, fourth round, you hope they work. And then... From second round to seventh round, it becomes a a you're hoping in three to six years to get an NHL yes. player. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And also, you're taking you're taking flyers on college players and stuff like that. Your because team's going to be doing you... lots of that. Yeah, and with college players, it's great because it gives you more time to not worry about their development or their contract. Because as long as they're in school, you don't have to worry; they're still your, they still belong to your your organization. Did they start choosing yet? Yeah, sorry to cut yeah, you off. Yeah, there, oh, just... Broder's choosing. Marty Broder, ah, yeah. one of my favorite def- goaltenders. His I face is a guy. little rounder than I remember, though. <laughs> well, he's in his fifties now. He was still an out. He's still an outstanding goalie. It, it was hard know, to recognize you, him at first. I'm going to be honest with that round face. Did you know that he was going to be this close to being a Maple Leaf? Yep. Did you know? Did you know that about that one? That he was prepared to. Toronto was prepared to sign. Whenever um, Lamarilla was the GM, he was actually going to be a Leaf. He was going to be sign um, a one year deal. Yes, he want no. He wanted the two. Jersey was didn't say if they were going to offer the two. He wanted two. Toronto wanted to give him one, and then Jersey gave him the second year. But he was he saw the plans for the rebuild. He got a tour of the city. He had a couple of meals with the executive. It was almost a done deal. I I would have loved that. Wow. What what's the deal? Jersey goes off the board and gets takes the Euro Macar Simon Nemec. Simon they Nemec. The That's defense. the guy you talked about. Right eh? The right defenseman, they skip. Is oh, right I think. Drop? I think. I think Wright's dropping. I think they didn't. You say he dropped me up to five. He might drop he even could, lower. He could drop to five right now, because I think Cooley's going three. Maybe. Maybe. And I don't there's know. still another wow. defenseman. Huh. Wow. Wow. That is that is interesting. Wow. Okay. Nemec. Hmm. Simon Nemec. Defensive. That's two Plated. Slovakians back to back. That's probably first in NHL history. Yeah. Well, 
first Slovakian to go first ever. So there's no way it's been one two ever. <laughs> ever no, ever. <laughs> like zero. <laughs> Nieto. The square root of nothing. <laughs> That's surprising. Well, it sounds like we're in for a surprising draft. Well, this this just flips a board. I'm I'm telling you. Wow, like you said in the last episode, you said that if one pick gets changed, the whole board shifts, right? It so now you got Shane everyone's right. Everyone's view. Like so now, actually, now Phoenix has a choice of you know what? I think they're gonna go. The reason I think uh, Arizona takes Logan Cooley because they're in a small arena. They need an American kid to help that team right now yeah not a Canadian. oh yeah they, well let's be honest the the coyotes need all the help they can get and and an american star would really help that organization not a canadian yeah, star an american star mr bettman's pet project he doesn't seem to want to ever let that team leave he will never let it go <laughs> i mean the city that we're like where we like where i came from, like lived and lived all most of my life their, my build, the building we have is actually bigger than the one that the Coyotes is playing in. So it doesn't make any sense, but they will not let that team leave, and I don't know why. Just don't, it's got to be something deeper that nobody knows about. Like you have Quebec. You have – how many cities, like city-wise, do you think should be moving like NHL? You have Quebec. You have Houston. You have Oklahoma City. You have – a number of other cities that could host a team, no problem. And they have buildings built, but yet, nope, we're going to keep them there. And put them in a tiny arena. In a microscopic arena for four years. Three years or whatever that and loose agreement that was. deal can be broken at any time if they, uh, if they, yeah. see, if they deem fit. No matter yeah. what Renault's they've done to that place and what they've done to it, they can say, no, we don't want you here anymore. Yeah, it's true. Absolutely true. What do we have here for comments? Let's see what's going on the comment board. That's what I was just checking out here. <laughs> it says here next year, Connor Bedard for the Habs. Well, that's the goal for the Habs, I think. Shane Wright said he's going to be first. Well, nope. Nope, that's not going to happen. Sorry, Wright, you're wrong. Two rights make it wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that comment. Maybe the Habs will still get right. LOL. Yeah, he drops the 26th and he picks them. <laughs> like Joe Valeno? Yeah, Joe Valeno. Yeah. The Joe that Valeno guy was special. supposed to be a top five and he went like 31st. He was in the second <laughs> round. I yeah. know, because Toronto was right after them. They selected. Um, who did they select after Valeno? It was Valeno and another player. They, they ended up selecting the other guy. Valeno in that Valeno draft. Because yeah. Valeno, I wanted Toronto to get Valeno. I thought he was good, but I guess... I heard he was an I, attitude case. Well, clearly he was something wrong with him because he And then there was, the that, there was that Poirier kid who was supposed to go late first and drop to third round. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, maybe they will still get him at 26. That would be something. <laughs> Shane Wright. Wright gets drafted by Montreal at 26. Oh, draft's Yay. almost over. Yeah. Draft's steal. almost over. But, draft steal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that actually happens. Our first draft, live draft we're going to do, and this happens. Wouldn't that be something? If I would that, laugh if he so fell into their left. Well, there's also talk that Montreal might trade that pick with their first second round pick, which is like 33 or something like that, and move up in the draft. Oh, you guys are going to move picks. They're going to move draft players. I'm expecting trades any moment. It could be a trade soon. It's got to be. Arizona might trade. Marian like Gaverick that. was the highest drafted Slovakian player until uh, Slavkovsky and Nemec. I'm going to bring up Simon Nemec's uh, bio here. I want to know a little bit more about him. I'm in playing. Nemec. He's been playing in men's league since he was like 15 in Slovakia. Let's have a look here. So 
So here's his bio. I'll bring this up a little bigger. So I don't know if people can see this or not, but I'll bring this up a little bigger. Crazy to think he was born in 2004. I was 24 when he was, I was 23 when he was born. But anyway, uh, six foot one, 198 pounds. So he's not a super duper big defenseman. That standard size. He's got some weight to him. He's a right, shoots right. Right hand D men are hard to find, man. Especially oh, I know. Moving I know. Right hand D men. Yes, they are. Uh, there's his. Here's his stats. So he here comes the Coyotes. Oh, he had good numbers. The Utes are the Utes are drafting. The Yotes. Yeah. Yeah. He he has great numbers for his age. Like, look at his age. Thirty nine games, twenty six points, one goal, twenty five assists, a plus twenty. Plus twenty? No, plus thirteen. He's Sorry, seventeen. 13. He was seventeen through that whole thing. And he had nineteen playoff games. And he had seventeen points in nineteen playoff. That's a good point. Good choice, New Jersey. Well done, New Jersey. Well, that's Jersey. why he got that nickname, Euro Macar. Well, you can see that possible. We'll bring up more play. Actually, you know what? This is what we'll do. We'll bring up each player after their draft, so we can have a look at their stats. I think that's yeah, a good idea. I like that. I like well, it gives the it gives the audience something to read too and follow along with us, right? So because I can't bring the feed in, so we'll do that. Especially if people don't know much about them. Well, this is the point. Well, people don't, and, but that's good. That's what we want. So, so good old all of your three fans. Sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> For all the Arizona fans out there, hi, well, hi, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm it. That's it. One, the one, the one guy stands up. Yay! <laughs> and he's got like paint on his face, and, and he's at the top of the building. <laughs> poor, poor Arizona. I hope. I mean, honestly, if they're gonna stay there, build the fan space. Like, help them out. Like. Clearly have, as we said earlier, they've clearly doubled down on them, and I don't know why, but now make the most of it. And Matthews is not going there, I'll tell you that right now. If they can, everyone can say they're not, that's just me. I just don't see them happening, but that's another story for me. Down again, Logan Cooley. Oh, I just heard that. Logan, Logan Cooley. This might affect Wright, too, because it really bothered him knowing that he wasn't first overall. Oh, why would you put yourself out there like that? Why would you so say? Are the, are the did did the Kraken just land Shane Wright? Yeah, they're next. They're the next ones. They're pick number four. Philadelphia could take him too if he falls again. Philly can go out. They'll, they'll take a D. They're taking David Yerichek. I guarantee. Yeah, you. but they're always full of. They like their defensemen. Hey, Philadelphia, they love defense. Well, that's they move them like now. <laughs> it's a revolving door of defense well, in that organization. They used to have the slowest defense. Glaciers move faster in their defense. Like, honestly, ice used to move faster. Like, Toronto, I remember one game, the Maple Leafs played them. And I swear to God, the Maple Leafs blew right by them all night. They could not stop them. They just couldn't stop Matthews and Mark. It was unbelievable. And Toronto was like on a leisure skate. It wasn't like they were actually trying. They were just gliding right by these guys. And I'm like, oh, I know. Holy moly. Like, guys, you got to have a little more fight in you. And I think Toronto beat them like five to one or seven to one. It was like a, just a drubbing. So I, I told you Arizona would take the American over the Canadian. Well, makes sense. Why wouldn't it? Right. They need a star. They need something to, they need something to bring their 5,000 fans. Well, when Gary <laughs> Bettman's your general manager, he probably told them to. He's the owner, isn't he? Who owns the Coyotes now? I don't uh, even know. It's a group, I think. It's like six, yeah. ten people or something. A bunch of, a bunch of businessmen on it. Okay. I think Logan John Ferguson Co Jr. is an AGM. I just saw him. Don't get started on that. Let's not talk about that. No, but he's he's with Arizona. Well, they're well, they're, that's okay. <laughs> that's why they're building so uh, good. <laughs> oh my God. All right, here we go. Mr. Logan Cooley, everyone. So, Logan U.S. Cooley. development program. 
18, 2004 American. 5'10", 181 pounds, but he's 18. He played with the Pittsburgh Penguin Elite as a youth. Wow. Shoots left. He's small, though. That's small. Actually, all- that's one thing about this. One thing about this draft, you're going to see a lot of small guys. They're all like 5'10 to 5'8. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. It's the really well, that's the trend, draft. eh? Isn't that the trend with the NHL? It's like we've speed. seen that now. Speed. You're, speed. You're, you're, you it's all out, speed. Yeah. You cut out all those clutching and grabbing. These little guys are your best bet now. The big guys his, can't catch them. So here's his points. So, so he got 51, 75. Points and what? What y'all made a trade for the third for the fourth pick? Are we getting what? Shane right? We just made a trade. Are we getting Shane right? <laughs> I don't know. You're the one with the television. I don't know. It's funny. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Him. So Romanov's gone. We Romanov, just traded Romanov and the 98th pick for 13th? Pick for, it was slated at 13. So that would have been the Islanders. What? Oh my gosh! Who? I didn't catch that. What? We got the 13th pick and then added the 65th or 60-something pick to Chicago for Kirby Doc. So Montreal is Kirby Doc now. That... Wow. Wow. I <laughs> and this is our first one. And look what you're already <laughs> saying. How's, how's your head? Is it still sore? <laughs> is your mind blown yet? Um, Absolutely. <laughs> so you got Kirby Doc. You got Kirby Doc now. You got your pick. You got another. You have three firsts now. Wow. Good job, Kent Hughes. I mean, geez. I think okay. we had too many left D. Well, Romanov hasn't been, again, I don't know Romanov well or Romanov, however they pronounce it. Romanov. Like, your, what's Romanov? Okay, what's your deal with him? Is it because he had lack of ice time? He didn't work out so well? Or is it because he's just not that good? I don't know. Um, give me he's the... a great checking defenseman, but he, his numbers, he just not getting points, I guess. Wow, well, they're being, as he just said, proactive. That's as proactive as it gets. I, I'm sad wow. to see Romanov go. I really I am. Gotta pay. Hey, you just got Kirby Doc. You got to pay. And that's, and I honestly think that is because of Bryn Katz in Ottawa. That's probably why that was made. Yeah. Well, also because I think it. Ottawa, Ottawa was going for Kirby Doc. I bet you they were going to make another move. And I think pro- my gut feeling, Montreal is doing an arms race. They want to get another quality player. And Kirby Doc's that guy. That. Another young player to help build your core. Right. I mean, that's how we build. This is what Six rebuilding foot five all centerman. About. This is what rebuilding's all about. It's so much fun. I saw all this stuff go on with my team. So. I had reactions just like you whenever I saw stuff like this happen. A lot of fun to watch. <laughs> oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Let's see here. I'm going to bring Logan Cooley's numbers back up because I wanted to, everybody to see it again just in case they didn't. Stream. There we go. So... So here we go. So this is. Um... Well, Logan, congratulations. Good luck. Yeah, thank you so much. David? Very interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Those are good numbers. 51 points in 75 games. So let's see who that uh, the Kraken go after next. Keep hearing we gave up a lot, and I I kind of feel the same. That's a lot. What 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 would be a lot? What do you consider a lot? Well, I don't know. Gave, I'm asking because I don't know. Well, don't know. to go to the Islanders to to trade up, we gave 
uh, a second and Romanov, okay. which a lot of Habs fans love Romanov, not going to lie. Right. And, and then from there, we took our 13th and added another second round pick and got Kirby Doc. So we gave away a first, two seconds, and Romanov for Kirby Doc. So you gave up a first, yeah, because you traded your 26th. Yeah, that's a lot. No, they, we traded the 13th. That's where we got it from uh, Islanders. Oh, so they got the 13th. Okay, so the trade goes. Islanders move the 13th to Montreal. For they get Romanov, Romanov and, they a get Rom and a second. So the second's for what year? Uh, this year. This year's draft. So next tomorrow. Then Montreal goes to Chicago and takes, picks up Doc for what? What did they actually for get? For the 13th and a second pick. The 13th from the Islanders moves to Chicago and they get that back. Yeah, that's quite a bit. That's Shane that's Wright looks so upset. He just got drafted by the Kraken. Oh, the Gra Kraken picked him up. I really want to know why he dropped like five spots. That's crazy. Well, Shane Wright. I, I gotta be something. I, I gotta told be you something he was about him. Though. I told you he was dropping because Devils weren't well, going to take me, center. Well, you told me that because of the fact that's what McKenzie's yeah. thing said. No, no, but no, I, I said I told you though, Devils didn't need a centerman. They have Hughes and Heesh here, so potentially he could drop because they grabbed a defenseman. Right. Well, they did. <laughs> they and didn't said, even take him either. <laughs> they didn't. And even, I said, yeah, the, no one I said him. the Yotes. I said the Yotes were not going to take him. They take the American kid. So it just fell right into Francis's lap. Why wouldn't he take him? Why wouldn't you take right? Well, they, they're a rebuilding team too. Well, actually, they're a building team. They're not even a rebuilding. Team. Shane Wright. Let's see. Have a look at Shane Wright now. Let me see, Mr. Shane. Wright. Plays for the Front Next team that. I they were a bad team, and he did a lot for them. That's the thing. I like this kid. Um, he was a t The other thing I like about him was he could have gone out and scored 160 points, but he's a team player, and he finished with 94 points. Still amazing season. Okay. But, no one's going to dispute uh, that. The, the big thing with him is they kept saying near the end, as the season progressed, his he tampered off. Well, is that lack of effort, or is that just his, uh, his mental? I don't know. If, Maybe he played defense first too much. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know, I don't know enough about him, but according to this, six, one, six feet, 198 at 18, the guy's probably got a few inches to go, so he'll probably top out around 6'2", 220 pounds or something. I can see that. Is he lightning fast, or is he like uh, middle-of-the-road kind of speed? Um. So I, th I would – like, he's very compared to uh, Suzuki and uh, Bergeron. So, I wouldn't say he's a speedster okay. because they're neither so, of those guys are speedsters. He's so, a very – he's probably the most um, full he, – he's probably the the prospect with the most full game. Like, he plays a full 200-foot game right now. Right. So, he's definitely NHL ready. Yes. So the Kraken, so this guy was ranked by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve out of fourteen ranked guys. Twelve gave him first, and he didn't go first. He went fourth. So what happened? That's my question. What happened? Why would you drop like I, that far? Well, here's the thing. Um, Kenzie even said halfway through the season, his scouts that he uses had him 10 on 10. At the end of the year, it was Slavkovsky 5, right 4. Yeah. And Cooley won. Right. Cooley won. Mm -hmm. 63, point, 63 games, 32 goals, 62 assists, 94 points, plus 23. Like, you can't knock that. That's going to be good. The Kraken could use that anyway. Seattle's going to need that. So, man, they must have just been. Ron Francis just must have been just like licking his chops when he saw that. Wow, impressive. Okay. 
Very cool. Let's see who else is next. I want to see if I can get this. Uh... And he was also um, an he was also an exceptional CHL exceptional play, player status, eh? Right. Where he got to join the OHL like at 15 or something like that. And those two years, 15 and 16, he was amazing. Something happened. I, maybe COVID did it because they lost games. They lost development. Dylan says, Montreal is preserving their rich tradition of being absolutely abysmal at the draft. Well, you know, there's got to be something. But, yes, the drafted record in Montreal has never been a strong suit. That's for sure. We'll see I'm wondering happens. if uh, Romanov was asking for too much money. That's again. There's another thing. It could be a money issue. We, we don't know, right? We, none of us know really what's happening, but it's possible. I, don't know. It's, I think Shane has an attitude issue. Well, that's possible too. I, I don't think these teams tolerate players that have problems with attitude. They just don't take it. Especially, don't accept. There's it. also like. They do those psychological tests with these guys, and I think that has a lot to do with it because they know what they do on the ice. It's the other stuff they want to get to know about them, right? So they ask them weird questions to see their responses. It's like they're getting interviewed for Google. Like they ask <laughs> weird questions too. Like they just ask off the wall questions that make you like, well, okay. I, I but that's because they're trying to figure out how, yeah, how your brain works. Trying to figure out how you think. Well, it's, they want to see how your brain works. Exactly. It's interesting. Uh, I can't remember some of the questions but i've i've heard some before and you're like what does that have to do with anything because <laughs> it's meant to do that that's the point yeah it's, meant it's to, to make throw you off work. to see how you react yes it's it's a way to do it but anyway it's interesting i'd be it would be neat to find out what they ask these players and see what they i bet you it's also a way to see if, all that. if what how your mental state is is this guy going to get disturbed is he going to be offended stuff like that well, you gotta have a thick skin to be in the NHL or any kind of pro sport league. Especially playing I mean, in a place like Montreal. Well, Montreal is uh, Montreal is a tough place to play. Maple Leaf Star, New York Rain, any of the major six, plus some of the other ones are just tough too. But Montreal, Toronto, are like the two. Really, even Vancouver, I find is tough. Montreal, or Calgary, sorry. Everybody, the high traditional teams. Oh, I think, but that's surprising. Now? Yeah. They didn't take the Flyers didn't take David Yurichek. They took Cutter Goche. Cutter Goche. Okay. Let's have a look at Cutter Goche. C U T T E R. Uh yeah. I believe he's an American guy. Well, let's have a look. His father played for the was drafted by the Jets in the ninth round in ninety one. Sean Goche. Oh, okay. Better goods. Boston College. Six three. Oh well, there's there's the, a left winger and a center. Six three two oh one at eighteen. Okay, that's uh, Philadelphia is all about their big bodies. That's what they like. They like big and they love rugged their players. They love their two way centers and stuff like that. They love they the love rugged their, players. They're Sean Couturier's. This guy could fall into the first or uh, the first one C or two C guaranteed if he's that big. The question is, can he skate? The question is, can he skate? Right? When you're that tall, I mean, I mean, he's an inch taller than I am, but you know, he's going to get but bigger. He's only 18. That's what yeah, I mean. He's, he's 18. <laughs> he's going to get bigger. He's got but he's gonna three get more years to grow. At least, depending on how the family goes. So. Usually, it's around 21 for males for for growing. According to this, according to the elite draft prospects, he's good defensively, uses body well on the boards, puck battles, and move. Well, okay, well that's that's a guy you want. Incredibly efficient offensively, the puck. Oh, is unafraid to drive the puck Goche. to the net. Apparently, he was born in Sweden. Or there's another name we can add to our list: Cutter <laughs> Gautier from Sweden. <laughs> but plays That's the okay. U.S. <laughs> but plays for the United States. Yeah, like uh, like our good friend, uh, good friend of the show there, uh, uh, Douglas Murray. <laughs> no, Douglas Murray from Sweden. Galchenyuk from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. 
yeah. the Belarusian Wisconsin. The Belarusian from from Madison, Wisconsin, that area. <laughs> Didn't you tell me that Gallagher said when he was roommates with them, he told them, like, you're not from Wisconsin. You know, you're, yeah, they, they had, it was on uh, Hapsi one time. He's like, you know, you being Russian, I'm not Russian. I'm, he's like, what? I'm from not Russian. I'm from, I'm from Wisconsin. He's like, dude, you have an accent. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be from there. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, that's a good player. Uh, well, um, Philadelphia, that's typical Philly, so... Cutter goes here, but that's fine. Hey, they need centermen. They need a they need a player like that. That's their style. So good for Philadelphia. Who's next? Columbus Blue Jackets. Now there's a team I don't know much about, and I don't really care what they need. Honestly, they just don't. They just I don't know. The Columbus Blue Jacket fans. I mean, they're great. They always fill their rinks. They're Great fans. They have a they have that cool uh, cannon they fire every time they score a goal. That's oh, don't even! No, I don't want to hear that anymore. After that ten nothing game, I don't want to hear it anymore. I hate that cannon. I hate it. <laughs> Didn't you guys beat them the next night, ten to one? No, wasn't it no, like it was a reverse? Colorado. It was Colorado when they were was that atrocious the co- at that, that the year they were atrocious. Oh really? Okay. And I then a was- year later, we on uh, on Patrick Waugh. Um, night against the Red Wings, we lit them up for like 11 1 or something <laughs> on Patrick Waugh night, the same night yeah. that the same he, that, score that, 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 Detroit that, lit that sunk them him up. out of Montreal. Wow, they lit, the they lit him up in Montreal. They lit them up. Patrick Waugh should have walked across back across the bench again and go back and say, I'm out <laughs> <laughs> or, or just walk out of the ice, cake. walk out of the ice, and just mic drop without yeah, saying a word, drop. Yeah, puck drop. <laughs> But yeah, that that cannon it, it could die. I'm I, no more. I don't want to hear it. So what do the Columbus Jackets need anyway? What do they need? So we're, um, everything. So they were yeah, six to one. <laughs> yeah, well, their best player. I mean, their best player is Cole their best player? <laughs> the eighteen-year-old. Whoever their Probably. Patrick Liney. Patrick Liney would be their best player. Sure. No, no, but if you're looking, Voracek's yeah. on the team. Roslovic Dillinger, is one of their best players, too. Roslovic, Jack Roslovic. Yeah. yeah, they have a couple good players. Merzlikens. Not Merzlikens. Yeah, Merzlikens. Yeah. yeah, they don't know if Corpusal is coming back there or not. He's a UFA this year, isn't he? I think he's going to go. Well, he's going to test free agency. I don't know how well he's going to do, but I think he's, he's an okay goalie. He's not. Oh, like he's a... serviceable. As, as I've heard many times, he's serviceable. He's going to be a yes. guy that's going to. Be well, useful one, to someone. That one year, I went with Corpus Allo and Merzlikens as a tandem in my hockey pool. Didn't they get four shutouts they, in a row? They, in two weeks, had like six shutouts. I was like, this is incredible. I've never seen this in my life. Nobody has. Yeah, nobody <laughs> has. Oh, yeah. They have, oh, they also have uh, uh, my favorite player, Sean Corrali, you know, because I love Sean Corrali. He's a great player. And, you know, when he played with Boston. Yeah. Then you have I'm just taking out their lineup here. But you know what? Oh, I want I want something... Jenner. There we go. That's the way I was looking for. I love Jenner. I a love lot of that people guy. do. Yeah, they, he's he's that guy that a team could use. Like Toronto could use a guy like Boone Jenner. You put him on, John on Davidson is up to t- to speak. Mr. Davidson. Okay. What he's gonna do. Thank you very much, Line, for being great supporters. With our first pick, I would like to introduce our general manager, Jarmo Kekalainen. Jarmo Kekalainen. The angriest-looking GM on the planet. Who's who looks Russian, but he's from Finland. <laughs> <laughs> and got, like, the Finland ultimate Finnish Finland name, but still. Yeah. Oh, they, they, they take they David. Pick. They took the defenseman, Yerichek. What's the first name? David Yurichek. David Yurichek. Y or J I R I C E K. A David, like David? Yeah, David. Can somebody tell me when the Czech Republic became Chechia? 
or Czechia. They just said he's from Czechia. And I, it, that's the Czech Republic now. When did it become Czechia? <laughs> Aren't you Look the Czech that Republic? Man. That's what we wanted you to think. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, here he is. You know, I have to say, Old David. You, don't, you don't have to see the feed. You don't have to listen to Pierre Maguire. I do. No. no. He got fired, didn't he, from Ottawa? Yeah, after nine months. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even last a year. As soon as Melnick passed away, unfortunately, unfortunately, um, Dorian got rid of him. God he clearly was soul. he he yeah. clearly was a Melnick guy, and I heard many times that his views were very different than Melnick, and he would always argue. Or sorry, his views were very different from Dorian, and he would always argue with Dorian on what he should do. Dude, you're yeah, the assistant general me. manager. You're supposed to follow your boss's lead. Yeah, but he's been bumped around the league, and he always thinks he's a GM, and like, he I never don't is. Who, I never wasn't he the GM of Hartford? Had a job. Didn't he? Wasn't I don't he know, the GM of? Say. I don't know how he got a job after Hartford when it is out there and it is known he was selling information on his players to other teams. Yeah, that's what he was doing. I was about to say that, but yes. Yeah, and he got another job after that. How do you get another job after that? Yes, they chose to keep him, but yeah. So this guy here, David here, he uh, let's see, here he is. Uh, for uh, let's see his stats. He had a knee. Aiden is the name of the game. He's yep. Yeah, he's fluid. He flows a fluid extension and clean recovery. Uh, he can walk the line and get a shot through traffic and loads up with absolute bomb or one timer. So he's got a heck of a shot, apparently. And he did have a knee surgery in January, and a did, lot of teams yeah. were kind of weary of that, but apparently he's healed and ready to go. Well, I mean, he's a defenseman, and right? So when you're and when you're 18 years old, you bounce back pretty quick from surgery. You should. You should bounce back after 18. I mean, let's be honest. But well, anyway, he's he's now part of them. That's well, different. Okay. Czechia. I'll have to look that up later. Anyway. Yeah, well, I'd, I'm very curious when that happened because it just, it was so subtle. I never heard of it. I didn't either I just saw, at all. I just, when I watched sporting events, all of a sudden I, I kept seeing Czechia. I'm like, what is Czechia? Where's Czechia? Yeah. And I just keep seeing the Czech Republican flag. I'm like, when did it become Czechia? It's interesting that he's they changed it. Kirby Duck. Yeah. He's now a hab. So cool. Interesting. Pretty cool. So who's up next? Uh, next is uh, the Chicago Blackhawks are on the clock right now. So the Hawks are on the clock. So the Hawks are in need of everything as well because they're rebuilding. The pick what do you just think? Twice. Well, that just shows you how kind of draft this is. If picks can fly around like that, clearly they're not. This is not a, a super deep draft. It's a pick full of talent, but nothing is generational. That's the best way I can explain no. it. No, there's not much generational there, talent there. No. There's tons of top six talent. There's tons of scoring, tons of everything, but it's not a guy who's going to be the man for 15 years. He'll have 10 good years. And that's like most most average NHLers who are very good. Right. And that makes sense. I mean, that, that happens sometimes. How many drafts out of the generational? You'll get one really good draft and then you'll have, you know, next according to what I've according to what I've read, next year's draft has five franchise players in the top five. Really? Five first yeah. round. Wow, general five. Wow. Five generational franchise guys are the top five. That's how so, deep it is. We said that in our last podcast about the fact that it's 20 years as a generation and ever, for the most part. And when was 2003 the last one? 2003 was the last 2003. So I'm going to check out 1983. Yeah, I want to see. I never looked at that one. So let's have a look. While we wait for the draft 
draft pick. Seventh pick is in. They're going to make their their uh, claim. Yeah. So this exactly was the trade. This was the pick they acquired earlier in the day from the Senators for the Debrincat trade. Okay. Here's I wonder if John, pick. I'm wondering. I'm gonna guess Jonathan Lacari Mackey because okay. they just moved. I don't out know, but well, yeah. they just moved out a scorer, so they need to replace scoring. Right. Okay. We'll see what they choose. We'll see if you're right. Going from no pick to two picks. That's not bad, Chicago. Hey, they have to do something. They're just they traded dying their pick, out there. They man. traded their pick to the, their pick was supposed to be 12th for Columbus. They traded that in the Seth Jones deal. They just moved two guys that are like elite forwards. I don't know why they did that, but there's obviously a reason for it. So the 1983 draft. I'll Is there GM up. 15? <laughs> I don't know. He looks like a kid. So here's the here's the before you before they announce it. Here's the draft in 1983. So every 20 years. So Brian Lawton was number one. Turgeon, Lafontaine, Eiserman, Barrasso, John McLean, Kevin Russ Korczynski. Who? Russ. That that's pretty deep too. Cor Russ yeah, Oh, just to come. Player. Yeah, just to look at this part. Yes. Uh, they Kevin Korchinski from the Seattle, was it Tri City Americans, I guess? Or is it Seattle Thunderbirds? No, they're the Seattle Th Thunderbirds now. Sorry. Couldn't tell you. I wouldn't know. I don't know that, that league. WHL. Yeah, I don't know that league. Did, what is it, his name? Uh, okay. Kevin Did Korchinski. Kevin. Kevin. It, and Cor Here, I'll, I'll type it to you. Yeah, just type it in for me on the, in the comment, in our chat. So Korchinski. So I can look him up. So we can bring him up on the board so people can see. Obviously, he's bullish. He's a, most likely, yes. <laughs> oh, actually, it's, uh, it's ski with an I, not a Y. Sorry. Kevin, there he is. Got him. Perfect. He's a defenseman, I think. Yep, I believe so. Here we go. He is. It's funny how much yeah, Cameron McGuire defenseman. talks about analytics now when he wasn't a big analytics guy before. A lot of people aren't. There's still not a lot of people that are on the analytics train. So. 6'2", 185 pounds. He definitely moved up in the ranks because he was overall ranked between 13th and 17th. There's a couple of 11s and 12s, but one eighth FC hockey ranked him at eighth. And where are we right now? Is this the eighth pick? Seventh pick. He actually moved higher than Seventh the one pick. that. So he's actually he higher models, than all of the ranks. According to this, he models his game after Kale McCarr. Well, everybody's going to model their defensive game after Kale McCarr. I mean, this guy's is unbelievable phenom. <laughs> he's phenomenal to watch. He, well, he's modeling your game awesome. after it means you want to play like him. It doesn't mean you can. It means that's the game you want to play. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yes. So, like Bob McKenzie gave him 11th. Craig Button gave him 10th. The Puck Authority gave it's him 17th. Weird. It's, it's kind of weird seeing them draft defensemen when they just got rid of forwards. I don't know. Interesting. How well, that's going to go? I don't. I don't know. That's these players are. It seems like that because it's such a movement, everybody's moving around so easily. It doesn't matter where they're ranked. They could go, oh, he's ranked 26th. Oh, he's going 8th. What? That's not how The problem works. is a lot of teams are cap-strapped, and I think they're willing to trade this year. Yeah. that's. I was going to say, there's at least 10 teams, including my team, that my are teams. You, you're, euchred, euchred right now. Well, you have they're one contract. Well, you have only one contract left to deal with, and if you can move that one, then you're whether they can move it or he wants to leave or play, I don't know. What's your view on that? What do you think about Mr. Price? What do you uh, what do you I, do you I, want him? I, Obviously, I'm at the view? point. I, I'm at the point. Just get rid of him. I, I don't want him anymore. It's too much money. 
Uh, I'm tired of this waiting for, is his knee going to come around? Is he going to go down in the season? I'm tired of his kind of, I'd say laziness because in the season, he's not, he doesn't look like the carry price you play against in the playoffs. And you know that you've seen him in the season. You've seen him in the playoffs. He's different. He's a different monster in the playoffs. Sorry, yes, my Twitch just, said, sorry, my Twitch <laughs> just came back. <laughs> and yes, he is a phenom in the playoffs. I will say that doesn't matter, but, I don't like his lackadaisical attitude anymore, and I don't like his lackadaisical play in the season. I want a guy who wants to win from the beginning. And I don't get it because he turned on his suit there, his whatever space suit or whatever he's got. Hold my beer. Super, super, <laughs> super price here, you know, like Super Mario there. And he you know, all of a sudden he powers through three teams without blinking an eye. Like while he was injured. While he was injured, and anyway, so yeah, he's the big he's the big drawback for your team right now. So him saying, I don't know what um, gonna the, do. Sean Starr from TSN six ninety has tweeted that he has a guy very close to Price who said so he spoke to Price and he's going to be playing at the start of camp. Now that is a big blow. Oh, he has to because that's that's ten and a half million dollars we just lost, and we potentially that's what made the, the Romanov trade that potentially is why we have to let Rem pick Pitlick walk now. Like it hurts. It really hurts. Oh, I understand price, that completely. Price I've been hurt enough. Montreal more like price playing right now is hurting Montreal more than price sitting out. Hey, my team has got four guys that are locked up over half of the salaries or whatever it is. And I mean, we're going, as we mentioned in the other episode we recorded earlier, it's a revolving door of third line and fourth line players in Toronto, and they can't seem to get that fixed because they don't have enough money to get what they need to fix those bottom lines. So they can compete like with Tampa even more so and go the extra distance. They just don't. It's all nine hundred thousand dollar, eight fifth seventy five. I mean, yeah, yes, and they're usually you know, and they're usually guys that are in their twilight of their career, like Spezza, Simmons, or it's these guys that they pick up, and it's like. Sure. He got lucky with we'll, Michael we'll, Bunting, but you'll we'll take Matthews. a flyer, see what happens. We'll take a yeah, flyer, see what happens. I can't. I don't want six players of flyers, as in I know. taking flyers on them. I want guys that are yeah. genuine that will actually make a difference. And that's know? what happens in a cap strapped era. That's the problem. Biggest right. problem. And cap itself. It's, it's the biggest. The biggest argument between any president and GM of a hockey team is. The cap forces us to trade our core when we don't want to. That's the biggest issue with the cap. Well, and that's a big subject on its own. The cap itself is a big problem for the NHL. It, I think it's too hard. I think there could be a they can soften it up a little bit, like maybe a little more like basketball or uh, baseball. Baseball's just what they have. No, they're luxury tax baseball. Yeah, is it, Yankees just overpay every year because they just go. Okay, over so the that's cap not a, that's not the model to go by. So. Yeah. So you go with a, a soft cap, maybe I don't know, but what's happening? Like you said, all these play, these teams that are building these cores can't keep them because they're losing them to other teams that aren't paying and may not want to pay. And that's the and problem. And if you're keeping them, you have to pick and choose which ones and pay them ridiculous salaries, and you're screwed. Exactly, and I mean, it's not fair to those teams. It really isn't. And I mean, if, I mean, like we know the agents all that have work to develop. You do all that work to develop these guys, and you have to let them walk. You created right. these guys, and you just got to let them go. Yeah, and that's what's happening all over the place. So, so the who's next? Red Wings drafted Marco Casper. Marco Casper. I wonder if he's rated from Steve Casper. Austria. He's from Austria. Nope. That's not Steve Casper's son. <laughs> <laughs> Unless Steve Casper was playing in Aust Austria at the time. Well, you never know, right? I mean, these guys go, these coaches go over there, and they. Uh, uh, so many times uh, guys are born in Europe because their dad played hockey over there or, or born over here because their dad's playing hockey over here. Yeah. Look at St. Louis. His kids are – he's Canadian. Both his kids are from Tampa. How <laughs> do you spell his first name? M-A-R uh, – Marco. M-A-R-C-O. C-O. Okay, Marco Caspar. Caspar, the friendly ghost with a K. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Here he is, Marco Casper. 
How many Canadians have been drafted? I don't think hardly any. Right now? Yeah, right now. One. How many Canadians have been? One. Uh, two, sorry, two. Cutter, Gauthier, two? and... Two? Okay. Yeah. Gauthier and Wright, I believe. So this guy's 6'2", 187. So he's a little light for his frame. But he's probably all muscle. But he's 18. So he's going to fill out. He's probably got another, maybe another inch to go, maybe. He might be done on his height, but he definitely is going to fill out. And Detroit Detroit loves their Europeans, right? They love Iserman picks gems. Like oh, he Moritz does. Sider, Moritz oh, Sider, Sider, William Wallander. He, yeah, William Wallander, Moritz. like. Yeah. He loves his Wallander. Players. Yeah, his Swedish players, they all love Swedish he, over in Detroit. Detroit is like, is uh, Detroit is uh, this, the capital of Sweden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's the second highest Austrian born player to be drafted in the NHL. Number one is Thomas Vanek. Thomas Vanek. So, this guy apparently he's physical, capable along the boards, even in terms of manipulation. He recognizes the angle of defenders coming at him and knows how to beat them and escape them. He's a pass to the right areas, knows the logical play. In offensive progression, he goes to the net and a hard and often yes because he's six two. If he can, he's got the size with uh, purpose. So if he fills out a little bit, um, rebound and score. He's got good first touches, takes him inside possible, possible and leads the next play. So this guy's a leader on the ice. So that's pretty cool. Peter Casper is his father, according to. Elite prospects. He played in the NHL, I think. That name sounds familiar. Peter Casper? Let's see. Yes, I believe so. 47, he was a defenseman. Yeah, he did. He played. Yeah, I, that name sounds very familiar to me. Peter well, Casper. he didn't play in any, he didn't play in anything. Uh, he played with the Florida Everblades in 1999, but he did not play in any NHL team. Oh, weird. I I know that. Why do I know that name then? Maybe Might be just mixing looking up with stuff up before. Yeah, he's not. No, he never played in the NHL, according to Elite Prospects. So. Okay. Anyway, that's him. Not bad. He's gonna be a big boy. He's gonna help Detroit out. So. Well, Buffalo's picking now. They're they're coming up pretty fast, so it looks like they know exactly what they want. Maybe something here. Sorry. Okay. Let's have a look here. TSN. Let's go back to TSN's draft here. I'm going to see if they put that back. I lost the tab for some reason. Might have used it. Oh, that's a good pick. Who was that? Who the, the Buffalo Savers have selected Matt Matthew Savoie. Matthew Savoy. That's a name that you told me about. Now, what's yeah, the deal about Matthew Savoy? He's a small forward. He's like 5'9", but he's got wheels and he can put the puck in the net. Okay. Pretty he, small, scored, but... he scored 90 points in 65 games last year for the uh, for Winnipeg. Okay. Interesting. Matthew Savoy. Now, the Buffalo Sabres, they are... What are their needs? Goaltending, obviously, is one. Yeah, they're a little bit of everything. They're another team that's a little bit in the wilderness right now. Well, Goaltending, I know. Dropped, I know can, yeah, they've go been going through so many GMs in the past few years that everyone has a different view. So they've been stuck in this loop of a rebuild. Now they finally have a path and need to stick to it for a couple of years. You can't fire the GM every, uh, every year and expect results. The GM needs at least three years to build a hockey team. That's true. True. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't get it. But, but I think Buffalo needs uh, Buffalo needs a little bit of. Everything. I know Jack Campbell is a name that's been mentioned quite often. That Buffalo is looking at. Uh, he's looking north of five million a year for Jack. Toronto. I don't Oilers too. Oil. Oh, so Oilers. So Oilers, Devils, and Buffalo have been the three names I've heard for Jack Campbell. 
and Toronto, of course. Toronto has been in the mix, but I've heard mixed names for him. I've heard, yes, they're engaged. No, they're not. I don't know. So I don't know what's real and what's not real. All I know is that I don't know if the Maple Leafs want to pay him $6 million plus or five and a half. So but Toronto's goaltending is going to be another question mark this year. So unless they know who they want, but Jersey, I don't think. New Jersey yeah. really like, fl- fl- like I don't understand what they want to do there because why would you go after McK- uh, like Campbell when you have Mackenzie Blackwood? Well, that's the other thing, right? But Mackenzie Blackwood's numbers, but granted, now Mackenzie's back numbers weren't, aren't great, but he's on a not a great Devils team. So hard to judge a guy. Now, if he went to Toronto, his numbers probably would rebound better because he's got a better defense in front of him and an offensive juggernaut. So he may not have to play amazing. He may have to play just like um, Osgood did. You know, like he was, Osgood Average. was not a... Well, anyway, he was not a flashy goalie. He was an average goalie, but he did the job. He was a serviceable goalie who got the job done, and they didn't pay very much for Osgood. And how many cups did they get out of him? They got three. He won three cups because he left and then came back and won another one. I know he won at least one. I know of that. He I won think he two. Got two. He was two. He he won as a backup to Vernon, and then he won as the starter, and then he came back years later and like when they went to Carolina, I think, and won the cup then or before that. The, the the cup before that one of the two, right? I'm pretty sure he uh, he came back and won a cup or did very well again or something. Right. Well, we'll see. Well, that's yeah. Again, Chris Osgood, same idea. Chris Osgood, average goaltender. So I mean, we'll see where Mr. Campbell goes. I'm not sure where he's going to go. But, yeah, I don't know if it's going to be my team. I don't know if they have the money. They don't have the money. I don't know if they want to give the money. So. Mm-hmm. But let's see here. Who else is coming up in the draft? So let's see. We have the Ducks. So the Ducks are up next at number 10. Then we have the Sharks and then Columbus again at 12. And then your pick that Montreal gave to Chicago is now coming at 13. So the Ducks are a weird team, I find. I don't know what you think, but the Ducks are a strange one. I, I don't know what they're doing, the Ducks. They're kind of in no man's land, I find. They just don't have – they had their star power. They just lost their captain. He just retired. I mean, Perry's been gone for a number of years now. Gibson, there's been talk of Toronto looking at Gibson as well. I don't want Gibson as a Leaf goaltender. I'd rather somebody else, but there's been a lot of talk of him. Uh, I mean, what's their – start? what's their, their – let's see what their roster looks like. I'm just curious to see what their – Let's see what they're going to do there. So their roster. So their big stars obviously gets laughs gone. Like Silverberg? Silverberg, maybe. Zegris. Okay, so Zegris is their star. So Zegris, Trevor Zegris would be their star now. Zegris and there's another kid. Uh, oh, Drysdale, Jamie Drysdale. I think is yeah. it Drysdale. The He's defenseman? their defenseman. Yeah, that's right. Shatton and I've Kirk, heard obviously. Josh Manson. I've heard Josh Manson wants to go back. Well, he's available. Yeah. He's going to well, go he back said somewhere. His whole life is in Cal. Is there right? His wife is from there. Everything. He wants to go back, yeah. even though and he he's won got a cup, his, He wants to go back. Well, he's got his cup now. I mean, he may want to go back, yeah. but I mean, maybe he's okay with just one. And if his family's all there. I completely understand that. He did what he had to do. Now he can go home. Oh, that was one of those successful uh, trades in the uh, deadline. That was a, mm-hmm. one was of a- those successful. They're pretty thin, man. They're a thin team. They don't have hardly anything. I mean, a lot of these players I may not know much about, but I know that like a lot of their they, a lot of their talents already on the team, like, like Sonny Sam Milano, Carrick Sam is, Steele, yeah. um, yeah. Sam Steele. Who else? Um, oh, Troy Terry. You got Zegris there. You got Derek Grant. You got, I mean, Sam Carrick is a former Leaf, and he was just he's traded nothing. off. Well, he's just he's probably a fourth line guy. No, their their main core is Troy Terry, Silverberg, uh, 
Zegris, Zegris Drysdale. Um, They're again, I'd identity. say a rebuilding. Yeah, I'd say a rebuilding. Oh, 100%. Even Caden Gooley, who is uh, his brother, uh, Brendan Gooley, they didn't even resign him. They let him walk. He's gone to Europe. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So they're not, they have no desire to do that. Oh, here we go. So they just chose, I see. Or you may not have yes. seen it yet. Uh, Pavel Mintukin. Mintukov. Pavel Mintukov. Who is Pavel Mintukov? That's not I don't saying. know anything. Like, again, well, we're starting to get into those picks that are mid range now, right? But we're at number 10. It's not like we're at number 24. You know, yeah. we're at like 10, and it's like, who's this person? His favorite player is Quinn Hughes. He's a left fenceman. Oh, Mintuka. Pavel Mintuka. He is from the OHL. So the Saginaw Spirit. Defenseman. 6'2", 194. Yeah, he's right around where they ranked him. One gave him a 9. That's recruit scouting. Gave him a 9. One of two-way field, one of two-touch speed for his weapons of choice. Bintukov uses to strike and... Uh, uh, and Steve Dangles with Colby Armstrong right now on his show. Steve Dangle? <laughs> I love Steve Dangle. He's, he's, Anybody... with, he's, with Col he's with Colby Armstrong. Yeah. Anyone, I'm going to put a shout out to Steve Dangle. Anybody who has Same. a chance, watch his show. Just watch his podcast, watch his show. He's got his reaction, his Leafs fan reactions. We've watched them. Me being a I've... Habs fan, I love them. Yeah. And honestly, he's he's a very genuine fan. Like he gives the Leafs a hard time and he gives the Leafs a great time. In terms and of he the puts credit where credit's due with them. opposite teams too. Yeah, and he does and the thing about him, what I like about him too, is that he does his Watch a uh, watch a game with Steve Dangle with other teams, even if his team's out. That I like. That I respect. That is cool. But he and doesn't have to do like that. I said, but that is neat. He will Maybe. give credit when credit's due. He will oh, talk yes. good when things are good. He will talk bad when things are bad. He knows, and when things are not bad, and he knows people overreact, he'll play on that too. And it's so oh, yeah. funny when he does. Yeah, the guy. If anyone has His, a chance to watch him. I recommend anyone go to Steve Dangle. If anyone has seen the actor Charlie Day, it's the same guy, only a different face. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing. I know some people don't care for him because he gets over the top. I love it. I think it's great. You do too. We've had some major laughs watching him lose it whenever Toronto does something insane, you know, or some crazy, crazy thing happens. So we'll see. Shout out to him. He's given me a wow. lot of laughs, that guy. But, but now, what's up? Arizona traded the 11th pick to San Jose for 27, 34, and 65. Oh, okay. So San Jose's next. So obviously there's somebody San they want. Jose's, San Jose's rebuilding, and they just traded three draft picks. Is it me, or are there a lot of teams that are rebuilding? Does it seem like half the NHL's like rebuilding? What do you think? I think so. It seems like every team needs yeah. like, oh, we're in a rebuild because our team. It's like all the old teams of the 2000s and 2010s Here's are all dying. Everyone who's everyone is like Connor Bedard's coming up next year. Let's rebuild everybody. <laughs> yeah, just tear the team down. Tear it all down. It's no good. But we went to the cup final twice. Tear it all down. Connor Bedard's coming. Doesn't matter. Connor Bedard. No. <laughs> Got a picture of Connor Bedard on his wall. <laughs> with in their office. Duck, duck in, their duck lips. in their office. Yeah. <laughs> All the teams have a Connor duck. Bedard poster. With the duck lips going like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I look at their team. I mean, they have Nick Benino, which he's, he's a good guy. He's a good, good, good player, good left winger. Yeah, Brett Burns, they've been trying to move him. They're not gonna move him. Logan Coutu. So well, the thing is, their their, their teams are that relic. core is a thousand, and you I can't know. move those contracts. They're the, the contracts are outrageous. Well, that's Doug Wilson kind of, has yeah. no concept of money. Well, isn't Doug Wilson done He's, now? Isn't it somebody new? It now, is it Mike Greer? Mike Greer runs it now. Is, yeah. 
Yeah, but everything on that team is is Doug Wilson. Yeah. He was so loyal. It really hurt the, the San Jose Sharks over the years. He can't be that yeah. loyal. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, he's... Uh... Every year was the same result. It was, it was kind of like what's going on with your lease right now. It would be a first round, blah, first round, blah, for, after being president trophy, president trophy, second. You know what I mean? Like, it was just constant I... with them. San Jose is a team that it's just their windows closed and now they're stuck with these guys. Their team's they aging. Move. They don't can't really have a seven year old for $8 million. They don't really have, I mean, Kevin LeBlanc, uh, LeBanc or LeBanc, LeBanc, he's, he's LeBanc. LeBanc. He's, he's one. He's a star. He's good. Timo Meyer. I mean, I like Timo Meyer. Good old Matt Meyer's Nieto. I still love that pool name you had. If you got Nieto, you got nothing. I love, love, <laughs> love that draft pool name. It is so good. When you got it, too, you got nothing. <laughs> um, for that team, I would say Timo Meyer is their biggest piece moving forward. Yeah, uh, they yeah, need to get a, creative and find a way to move out some of those contracts. They need to get very yeah. creative. Yeah, that's the problem with them. They're just too old, and they're just they're just sunk. They don't have any movement. They held on Nick. too long for that. Yeah, they one on of those things. For that one of those things. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to remove that. We'll go back here. And Have they chose yet, or are we still waiting? Uh, we're waiting. Arizona pick is in. They just made the pick? Okay, we're going to wait and see who they pick. Huh. Arizona's again, like we said earlier. Arizona's a team that's I just no idea what they're gonna do with Arizona. I just don't. As a as a whole. I just don't know what they're gonna do. Well, what can you do with that team? Like oh, I don't know. When you're changing management groups and ownership every two weeks, like what can you do with that team? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Let me tell you. So you got Arizona's next. So, oh, I guess I guess the trade was to Arizona for the three picks. Okay, so San Jose was the choice. Then it ended up going. Yes, okay, that's why it's Arizona's pick now. Okay. So it makes me wonder if they're going for Lakari Mackey or maybe uh, Maroshnikov. Maroshnikov, okay. He's he was actually supposed to be a top five pick, but he had uh, not Hodgkin's lymphoma, so he kind of dropped. Ryan? Yep. Sorry. Yeah. He, okay. Yeah, he, he was supposed saying? to be a top five. He, uh, Miroshnikov, he was supposed to be a top five pick, but he dropped because he got non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. The okay. the Mario Lemieux cancer. Oh, jeez. That sucks. Oh, who'd they pick? Connor Key, the brother of Morgan Geeky. The Geekies. <laughs> I present you the Geekies. What did we say last time? They, they seem to like the same stuff all the time. They're really good We're at certain key. things. <laughs> I almost it. fell down the stairs going to the, the podium. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't believe he got drafted that high. Uh, God, he's a centerman. 6'4", 100. No, wow. He's a big he's center. A big boy. Ooh, Canadian from the Western Hockey yeah. League. 6'4", 190. The Winnipeg Ice. Old Winterpeg. Good old Winterpeg. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, okay, Connor Geeky is going to the Arizona. Going to Arizona. Arizona. Going, to, going to the desert. So, interesting. See what they have. Let's see what that team has. Let's see what their stars are like. They don't have too much there. I don't know if Kessel going, if he goes somewhere else, they'll they have a I wonder if they still have a lot of dead contracts. Remember when I showed you that a while back? They have like 38 million dollars in LTIR. I'm like, yeah. that's like some team's like full salary for like half their club. 
that's the Arizona Coyotes' actual payroll after all the players that they've that are retired, injured, or are, uh, are on the books. It was crazy. It was absolutely nuts. I'm like, you have like forty million bucks in, in LTIR. Like, I remember and it was one like, year they the, the, the Coyotes actually had was it twenty six million in actual salary. The rest was dead cap from injury. Yeah. From uh, yeah, it was the same year, <laughs> the same time. I'm like, you guys can go out and get a whole new team. You can have two teams at the same time. You can have a home team and an away team because you have so much cap space. We have four goalies. We have we have eight. Was it? We have nine nine centermen. And meanwhile, the IR list was like a better roster than the actual roster. I know That's, that was even crazy. Like some ridiculously good stars that were like super broken. It was like Datsuk and stuff. And like. If these guys could play, this team would be like a powerhouse. But they were all broken. <laughs> My God. Unbelievable. Unreal. Well, like I said. Yeah, well, they had so many picks. I mean, what would we say yesterday? They showed it that had like actually like a letter in the in the picks, like a T and an I and a A and a, a, a diamond, a diamond <laughs> in it, because they've got so many draft picks. They had like tons. It basically spe- it was it spelled rebuild in Braille, is what I said. Yeah. <laughs> Good God, guys. Yeah. So their team here. Here's their team. This is what they have. This is what. You got Beagle, Lawson Krause, one of your favorites. Krause. Krause. Lawson Krause. Awesome Krause. Yep. I like that guy because, you know, he was t- highly touted. He bounced around a little bit, and he took a long time, but he's now the player that everyone wants. It's true. Lawson Krause is, is highly sought. He's 6'4", 215. That's a big boy. That's a big left winger. Woo-hoo. Yeah. Imagine hit, that hitting you at, like, big full speed. Oh, my God. It's a Mack truck. So of course, you got... Yeah. I wonder how Clayton Keller's doing. <laughs> Didn't he get... He got hurt with his knee, eh? He, he really got hurt last year. Yeah. You, don't you remember that picture from the hospital where it's like it was, like, wrapped up like it was this big? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His, yeah, he. I think, uh, I think he tore everything in that knee. Yeah, I think he has a new knee. I think or something. Anyway, hopefully he comes around because he's a really good player. He's a really good. He's player. He's young. I think he could bounce back. Yeah, he is. Yeah. So you got Kessel. You got and Andrew Ladd. And a lot of the time, the surgeries they do now are unreal, man. They don't have to cut you open like they do. No, they all have it where it's. There's days. Yes. Nick Schmaltz, Chikrin. It's it's literally like scopes and laser. Right. Yeah. Chikrin, Chikrin, I hear moving. I hear Chikrin you got moving. The, yeah, that's he's been he's been told there's been a lot of talk of him moving over the next What if number uh, of, Montreal moves number of teams. and they're in talks with him? Hey, anything's possible with your team. Again, you're going through a rebuild. Anything can happen, so be prepared. And Jacob I mean, look at their, young enough to, look, to fit the mold. Look at their goaltending. Look at that beautiful goaltending. Isn't that like oh, NHL say hello caliber? To my friend. Say hello to my friend. Yeah. Oh, oh we have a puppy. Cool. Yes, That hello. is Domino. <laughs> so we have Harry Terry, you know, Toronto's – he was a Maple Leaf <laughs> for 15 minutes. Harry Carey. And, <laughs> Harry Sateri, and then we have Car- Carol or Car- Carl. I can't pronounce that last name, but anyway, he's from the Czech Republic. Like, yeah, that's not going to win. Sorry, <laughs> that's not going to win, though. You're going to have to get a goalie or something. So, Danton Matichuk is the Columbus Blue Black Jackets pick at 12. At 12? Okay. So that's he is what uh, he would be what to position. What's he play? I believe a defenseman. Okay, so it's kind of all over the place this draft. They kind uh, of everybody's this, picking this, a little yeah, bit of everything. Draft, eh? Well, I was gonna say this draft is full of D men and centers. 
Right. Okay. Stanton Marin. Interesting player. Be able to send the link over to the uh, the other group. Can you post it in there, like what we're doing? You might be able to do that. They might be able to watch that way if they want to watch. Okay, Typhoon. Give it a try anyway. We'll see. Just curious. So I know they may have missed out on a little bit on the first part of it, but I mean, there's still lots of choices to come. And let's see. Defenseman, 5'11, 180. Yeah, he's a lightweight. 17, though. So he's still got a long way to go. Oh, yeah. Moose Jaw Warriors. But I love that name and city name. <laughs> I've never been to Moose Jaw, but it's, it's, it's a cool name. 2004. Oh, he's, he's later in there. So. Oh, he's Matei Chuck, not Matty Chuck. Okay. Well, that's what happens, right? You don't know some of these team names. So. Interesting stuff. And they're on a commercial break, finally. Oh, I'm sure they want one. So what do you think so far? So what do you think? What do you think into this live uh, stuff and all that? You like this? I'm liking it. I think it's I, great. I do. I like it. It's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. I think we're going to do, as we've said before, we're going to do probably a new FA show the day of, if we can. If not, there'll be a show after a recap of what happens. But it's kind of nice to do this show and what we did earlier on a day where basically a whole bunch of news broke at the same time. So it's kind of cool. So... I think it's fun. But yeah, this, this is going to be... Uh, it'll be interesting to see now. Where does the Maple Leafs pick? The Maple Leafs for 20... What is it? 20... 25th. So the Maple Leafs pick 25th. And they haven't made a move to move up. Interesting. Not yet. Why would they... they, may, they yeah, may they may move up. Yeah, they may move up. If there's a player they want... Time. Oh, of course. And I'm surprised the lack of, well, I mean, I shouldn't say lack of trades. There's been some pretty big ones. Your team has been quite busy with the trades. I mean, you did say, though, that there will be a lot of movement in Montreal because it is in Montreal this time. So Yes, and I did certainly say have I, a disappointment. I was, expecting, I was expecting something big, but I wasn't expecting one of our one of our actual actual NHL left-hand shot defensemen being traded. That's what surprised me. Because what do we get? We're obvious. Uh, my biggest concern with this is Kent Hughes said, I am not starting more than one rookie defenseman in the NHL. So there has to be something else in the works. There has to be. Hey, I told it you before, make sense. G GMs change their mind. There must be something that's changed his mind. No, I know, but this is something he he, he keeps saying. Like every time I hear I him talk, we're only using one. We're only using one. We're only using one. GMs. DMs could say what they want, but it doesn't mean they're going to follow with what they say. You know that. But I mean, when, when they say, but here's the thing: when they say we're only using one, I'm expecting a rotating door of each one of them getting a chance to play this that year. Yeah. I don't take too much in stock of what GMs say because they could change their minds, or it could be all fake for all we know. I mean, but you don't. They can, don't and really they can only start... tip their hands so much. They can only say so. But much. do you really want an entire decor that's 20, 20, 21 years old? It's not good for your team, and it's not good well, for confidence. Well, I don't think your team is looking for confidence this year. Your team is looking to get Connor McDard. That's what your team's looking for. Yeah, no, they're, they're trying to gain uh, They still want to play decent hockey. You don't want, just want to go out there and get wrecked. You want to look okay on the ice. You want to well, put a nice think. product because, because you yes, you want to finish last, but you still need to sell seats. Well, I don't <laughs> think... Honestly, I like, don't. When you guys, when you guys were going through it, you still needed to sell seats. Unfortunately, that's well, why you did bring in some things here and there just to fill the seats. Well, first of all, my question to you is: Did your team issue a letter to the fan base about what's going to happen? Uh, I don't think so. 
They did. See, my team, I think, did. They they messaged their all their season ticket holders explaining, this is what we're doing. This is what's going to come. Don't expect anything crazy. And they still sold out, which we all know the Maple Leafs will sell out anyway because that's just how the team. But we were explained that pain is coming, like Mr. Babcock said. Pain is coming. Well, there was a lot of pain. I know, I know Kent Hughes Let's said that his exact words were, we want to be competitive in three years. So it's two years of misery is what I got get from that. And that's fine. We had two years. We squeaked into the playoffs in Washington against Washington. We weren't even supposed to be there. We were took a team that sixth. was supposed to. And we took them to six in that first round. And that was the Stanley Cup champions that year. They were the cup champions. Again. Again. There it is again. Like, and then last last year you lost the Stanley, the Western Conference champs. Like, look at look at the trend we you guys put, go. And we pushed them, both teams. We yeah. pushed the Capitals and we pushed the Tampa Bay Lightning, but unfortunately we couldn't close. But what I'm getting Frank, at is that that what's that? Frank Nazar to the Chicago Blackhawks. Frank Nazar. Now let's have a look. Or at Nazar. I... Right. Well, he is a centerman, here. USA, 5'10", 180, Yet again, small. Part of the U18 I told you, a lot program. of small guys this year. Well, it seemed, well, there's a few big big ones like Connor Geeky, but that's few and far between. Well, it's mostly mostly 5'10", 5'8", is what I told you. There are some, obviously, you're going to get big guys, but it's a, it's a draft full of speed, I think. Yes, absolutely. Frank Nazar. Okay. From the United States. So... We went through pain. We got through that first round. We played that first round. You guys are going to go through your share of pain. Obviously, don't – your team is going to go through flux, man. Like, you're going to have flux all over the place. Oh, you're, going to, you're going to see guys moving oh, out. You're Like I said last time, like, don't expect look, anything I'm to make okay. sense for the next six months. I'm okay if they do this right. With Bergevin, I didn't know if we were going left, right, upside, down, forwards, backwards, or doing backflips. Every oh. year, it was like a new plan. I didn't understand it. This, well, I this don't one think is your fan base like understood it either. To the plan. Chicago picks Frank Nazar. Okay, let's have a look at this. Here. Let's see. First of all, Chicago. Blackhawks look like He's the weight of town. If you ask me. So, here's the Hawks. The Hawks have Kirby Doc gone. They just picked up Frank Nazar, so he's now on their team. So you got Kublik, Kane, Taves, of course, Dylan Strome, which he may not be there, Calvin DeHaan, defenseman, Seth Jones, of course, Connor Murphy, another good. So they have some talent. Their goaltending is not there. They don't care. No, I don't think. I don't think that's important to them. Tyler Johnson. So they're kind of they're kind of in the middle. They're just they've got some yeah. stars, but they don't have any, as you said, no building blocks. They have There's lots no of pieces. There's no glue there. Yet. There will be. When they're done, there will be glue. It just they kind of need a little time. bit of mishmash. Well, they need a mishmash of everything. It's not like they're like say, oh, we need defense. We have the forwards. We have a goalie. We need deep. No, no, we they don't have anything. They basically have been put through a blender. They don't have anything. So. As I say, it'll come. It takes time. It does. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's going to take time. That's that's the point. Oh, look at that. My dad is watching from the. Cool. So we have hello Philippine from the Philippines. <laughs> so he's from the Philippines. Is your dad? What well, did your dad check it out at all? You said he was going to watch. If, yeah, I, I don't know if he's watching through my mom or through my dad. Well, as but, of right uh, now, according to this, it says there's only one viewer right now, which is fine. It's great. We had it up. It was going pretty good there for a while. But yeah. yeah. It's fun. So the the Jets are next on the uh, on the wire. Now, there's a team that's a big question mark, and I don't know what they're going to do. They're a weird team. They, they have, Everyone wants to run away right now. 
Well, and they just they had a good team. Like you have Hellebuck, you have they had these stars, and I'm like, this team like 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 Blake Wheeler's there and they're just a bizarre they're just a small, bizarre you know they're a good team. They were good when they were good, but I don't know. I don't know what they need. Again, another team that we don't know what they need because they need a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Like a I defenseman, agree. maybe? Maybe a defenseman to replace Bufflin? I don't know. They haven't had Bufflin they, they in a couple need... years. But They're... Shifley wants to leave now. Like, Shifley what's going to happen out? to those guys? Yeah. Really? I wonder why he wants out. Well, I mean. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I think Winnipeg needs. Winnipeg's going to need. At least a defenseman, I think. They need a big top four defenseman. They lost who? They've they drafted, lost. They've drafted so many that haven't panned out. Like we have a guy right now uh, from them. I don't think we're re-signing him. I think he's going to walk. But Sammy Niku was a defenseman. They had. He was drafted later in the draft, but they had so high hopes on him because he had a sixty-five point season in the AHL. It just never translated. It. I mean, you got to hit on those draft picks. I'm sorry, you got to hit on the draft. Sometimes picks. it just it's it's on. It just sometimes isn't. They just can't change translate their game. Maybe the speed is too much for them. Like they have Mason Appleton, Kyle, Kyle Connor is really good. I like him. Obviously Pierre Luc Dubois, but he's got to be signed. And right? he doesn't want to stay. He doesn't want to be there. No. Shifley there's doesn't want to be there. There's talk that Montreal's going after him. I, I don't of think Luke, so now that we got Kirby Dubois. Doc. No, no. He's a center? Doc's a center? Yeah, six foot five center. Yeah, well, you don't need him now. <laughs> well, no, you don't. You can get him, but he's going to be, what, your third guy? No, you're not going to pay. Put Pierre Luc Dubois on the top, and you're, you're going to have. You're going to move yeah. Doc to the third? No. You Doc's can't. younger than he's, Dubois. And then Doc is going to be a big money guy, so they're not going to. Doc was gonna... highly touted, but when Chicago drafted him, that wrist injury changed their whole plans because they don't think he can re- rebound from that. Wow. I get I'm the thought process could. behind that, but when you're that young, I yeah. think he can. It was they, pretty I gruesome, think, the injury. I think they quit on him too early, though. Possibly. I believe that. Do you not remember Vincent Trocheks when he broke his ankle? Yeah. Oh, there's a guy. And he there's a guy that... rebounded. Yeah, he's I thought he well would never play him. again. I thought he no. was done. Well, I didn't think the injury on the video, the video and the in, the injury on the His video. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. And then he yeah. landed on it at the same time when he fell. It's like watching uh, what's his name? Point tear is a quad brain Toronto last year. I, and I, I'm pretty sure he was a compound for a br- break too. Like oh yeah, he fracture. went through the skin. Yeah, I'm sure he did. So they have Nicholas Ehlers. Adam Lowry, Shifley. Oh, Rutger McGrory. Oh, McGrory. they went with Rutger, <laughs> eh? The guy we talked yeah. about yesterday, Rutger. Oh, there's a go. McGrory. <laughs> yeah, I want to check his stats. I will put him up here because I want to see them. McGrory. <laughs> yeah, send him through the chat for me there. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. German name with a Scottish last name. Sure, we'll go with that. I don't know. Mick Mick Brody? Oh, Mick Brody. Yeah, Mick, Mick, eh? Mick and Mac, yeah. Yeah. Mick Mick Brody, Mac Brody. Interesting. Rutger McGrody. There we go. He's an American from the University of Michigan. He is a 6'1", 205. Offensive guy. He's all about offense, looks like. Yeah, 54 games, 69 points in the USA team last year. He was a plus 54. Oh, my God. So he's really good defensively. Apparently. Apparently. (laughs) His stats say. According to the stats, yes. (laughs) Those are insane stats, man. Plus 54? Yeah, he sucks. (laughs) It's so terrible. On the ice for 54 more goals than against. Yeah, he's, we don't want him. Nope. Why? <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? 
But look at this, like here, like look at this, just to give you an example. Like he's got they they ranked him at 27, 40, 27, 36, 26, 22, 25, 23, 28, 27, 20, and 25. The only two was 16 and 15. There were only two that like thought he would be higher, like much higher. The rest and were all like fourteen. Low. And he went at four again, went above even what the highest one was. So so this draft wonder. is already flipped. Oh, yeah. Oh, is it ever flipped? And that, I believe the Elite Prospects list uses the uh, the McKenzie list as well. Right. Because, right. like, the the McKenzie list is, like, the official draft list. Ranking. Well, that's the one that they go by, right? That seems to be the, yeah. the gold standard, right? Well, he uses 10, of, 10 NHL scouts. 10 NHL scouts. Okay, so. But this and this what put him on the map in the first place when he was writing for the hockey news way back in the day? Wasn't yeah. it the draft was his thing? They got him. Um, well, yes. Him. When he joined when he joined TSN, he always said he felt there was not enough coverage for junior hockey. And he's a he's... big promoter and big creator of the world juniors. Mm-hmm. I was about to say that he was actually, I think, the founder, one of the founding fathers for that. Yes, he pushed that tournament so that they could uh, display the young talent to see what can come up, so people have an idea mm-hmm. of what you're drafting. Yeah, and he also, he also, when he retired a few years ago, I think he's two years into his retirement now, he made his deal that he always will do the juniors no matter what and the draft. Always, yes, he'll always be there. Well, as much as he wants to be, like I mean, he's a consultant now, is what he is. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, he's not a day to day reporter anymore. I think he does so many Leaf games now and a few other TSN obligations, but I think that's about all he does. And makes uh, margaritas. So, Bobby Margarita. <laughs> hey, whatever, man. That's 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 cool. Good for I him. Loved that at the deadline. That was probably the most exciting part of the entire trade deadline. Was Bobby Margarita? The Bobby Margarita. <laughs> You gotta love Bobby the draft Margarita. was so stale and so boring. <laughs> wow, it, it, it's it's not always exciting, you know. Like this it one's kind not, of been. The that? draft is not the way it used to be. The draft used to be crazy, and or not the draft. Sorry, the deadline used to be crazy. The deadline, yeah. But everybody and, does their deals before the deadline now. So. Yeah, everyone makes two weeks ahead of time now. They don't do it at the deadline because, honestly, in a in a in in a perspective of looking at your team. Bringing a guy in for the last two weeks of the season is not enough time for him to gel with your players. And no. a lot of time, that's why they look so disappointing for your team going into the playoffs. They didn't have time to, to transition their game. So getting them two weeks before that, you get a month to play with that team, that gets you more time to gel. That's right. Yeah. And again, exactly. And the thing is that there's no way people can adjust that quickly, right? I think they should make the, the, the deadline earlier so then... It gives it teams more be. time to gel. I think it was earlier. It was like, I think it was early, like, it's like what, 20 some games before the end of the season? Is that- yeah. Yeah, it's about 62 games, I think, in somewhere around there. But 20, again, 20 games is not enough. And especially when you're only playing like two, three a no. week. Well, how many trades have not worked out for teams that have basically mortgaged their future to get a superstar or a, an aging superstar, or somebody who's. In their in the twilight of their career, but will help them still, you know. So My many favorite trades. Is the Atlanta world. Thrashers when they made the playoffs for the first time and they went all out and they got swept four straight. <laughs> <laughs> and where, where's Atlanta so now? Many Not picks. in Atlanta. They spent so many picks and so many prospects just could free. We're in the playoffs, we're gonna make a push. Four games. And Good job, you're guys. Out. Good job. Well done. And they're gone. <laughs> wow. Hey, but that's what happens, though. That's what these guys and Kachuk do. Was, Kachuk was like, I'm only here for the playoffs and going back to St. Louis when this is over. And he did. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, why would he stay there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's up next? Uh, Vancouver Canuck. So, Van- so Winnipeg chose who again? Oh, Rudger. Yeah. Rudger. Rudger McGordy. <laughs> so the Canucks are next. So the Canucks are an interesting. So they just signed Besser to a new deal. 
They got a superstar goaltender with Demko now. So they're pretty much set in goaltending. Their defense isn't bad. Vancouver is kind of that team that's in the middle. Like it's kind of up and coming, but they still need some help, right? Yes. You say? Well, yeah, they, they do. Uh, they need something. Like they have a lot of good young players, but it's not. It's not gelling properly. They kind of remind me of Toronto about four years ago, three years ago. They kind of were in that they have a bunch of players that are good, like really good up and coming stars, but they just can't seem to make that next step. Like they're missing pieces. They're an incomplete roster. There's no question about that. So let's have a look at their roster. Let's see what they have. I don't mind looking at this. Kind of gives you an idea. And if there's anybody out there watching this that watches and does hockey pools, I always suggest have a look at the rosters. You can find some gems in there, and some players you think aren't any, or there aren't any good, they're actually quite good, and that's surprising me. Also, I do recommend in pools before your draft. I'd say like a week before your draft, always look up, see what you can find on any reviews of sleepers, because if you well, can find sleepers. good reviews on sleepers. The sleepers will win you playoff pools. Well, we're going to do a show about pools just before the season starts. So, obviously, we're all, you and I both have our own pools that we always go in. But the thing is, mm -hmm. is that it would be good to do a show where we can actually give pointers or actually stuff because you've won a pool. I've come in second a number of times, a couple times, even in thirds. I would, I've been in I would have won one. another one. I would have won another one a couple years ago, but COVID killed won. me. Yeah, COVID killed my team too. And and then there was another team where like, I was like first overall. Like, I was fine in the finals again <laughs> this year for one. So, I mean, it's always fun. And I was in the it's finals cool. in, my, in one of my pools this year as well. You, you, you were go. in that same so, pool. Yes, that's right. I had to beat you and, to get there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that was an interesting time. Yeah, that was fun. But again, we always said that. We would always be down to like one category. And that's it. And that's exactly it was, what it was. And it was. It was the last day, and he goes and he picks up a bunch of Winnipeg guys. I had I had four waiver draft pickups, so I grabbed yeah, four so the, Winnipeg players. That's so the, the only pool, team that the was pool, playing. The pool had had the pool had he had four picks left. I burned all mine two days prior because I needed some other players to try to keep myself going. And he just squeaks right by me by about one one category. Again, we'll explain yeah. pools and all that later on and a number of months from now, whenever it's back on, because I think that so would be many great. Different types of pools too, like there's yeah. there's head to head matchups with teams. There's just points. There's there's, there's, there's rotisserie. All kinds. There's, there's, there's auction, all kinds. There's auction drafts too, which are kind of cool. Yeah, I I've been in a baseball draft, and um, yeah, that's pretty neat. So, so the Canucks selected Jonathan Lacari Mackey. So they selected Mackey, eh? Yeah. Well, they have Garland. Connor Garland won't be there. He'll move. Ho Ho Hoglander is going to be there. Horvat, of course. I, I, J I just don't understand why you'd move Garland when you just got him. Brock Ben. Well, they're saying that he might move. Doesn't mean he's actually going to move. Yeah. I but think Brock Besser. Just Besser for like, he did. He yeah. Just I mentioned earlier. Five. Yeah. He signed yeah. a six year deal, I believe, with them. He yeah, signed a good, like, a, seven? And a, a very fair deal, I might add. Very was fair. it six point six or seven? Yeah, very That's Nylander like deal, a Nylander like deal. Yeah, but but he, he did but regress he did. a little bit in the, since he did have his last contract. That's why they signed him to that deal because he hasn't really shown that big explosiveness. He did get hurt not long ago. I think it was two years yeah, ago. He's he got never really hurt. He's never been the same since. No, he hasn't. So they've got Tanner Pearson. Like they have good players. JT Miller, of course, ninety-nine point guy. JT Miller, who I didn't know, had ninety-nine points on a not so great Vancouver team. But anyway, that's unbelievable. Then I got Travis <laughs> Travis Dermott, good old Leaf. <laughs> Honestly, I'm happy for Dermott. He did well in Toronto ish, but then he started to have some blunders. I'm kind I'm happy Dubas found him a home. And it always seems their defensemen. Frankie Corrado, uh, Travis Dermott. What's it? What they was the guy that there. they all ended up in? What was the guy that Lepsick? He ended up in Vancouver. All these former Leaf draft picks all ended up in Vancouver for some reason. 
Uh, you got Quinn Hughes, of Meso course, superstar. Meso was there a long time ago, too. Oh, I know. Meso X Leaf was there, too. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean uh, oh, Years Sergio? Ago, but... You mean Sergio? Yes. Oh, yeah. Sergio, have, I like my pasta, Meso. Uh, yes, Sergio he won the Cup in 86 with them when he was yeah, 18. He was ab, yeah, he was ab. He was part of that that rookie crew that jumped in and won the cup. Yeah, Thatcher Demko, that's their superstar goal. And they have Halak too as their back. He's gonna be so, so good, Thatcher Demko. Demko? Dem- Demko is a superstar goalie in the making. I think yes. He is he's on a good, he's on a solid team. I'd say barring, Vancouver, I'd wait for Barring injury, they have a great barring injury, they have a great goal to, goalie there. To the point too that their their other highly touted goalie, Michael DiPietro, they're ready to just sh- ship him out of town now. They don't even need him. Oh, yeah. oh that's, yeah. well, this is it. Vancouver doesn't need a goaltender, so Buffalo Sabers are back. The Sabers are back again. The team that pretty much needs everything. <laughs> Who is that? I can hear him in my headset. Who is that guy? Well, um, it said something, something of uh, Fon- Fenton or Fonten, Jerry Fenton or something. It's like one of the, oh, the director like player scouting. Is it like Mike Fenton? Or maybe that's the one. Yeah. Is it Mike Fenton? Because Mike Fenton yeah, is an so. NHL exact. He's a he was a okay, national for to a go, long time. He went to go speak and he, his voice crackled to start. He was like, "Well, it's the first pick of <laughs> the, with the." Nerves. That's why I kind of giggle. Just nerves. <laughs> He's just nerves. Hey, man, so got, public no. speaking's not fun. I mean, what we're doing here is kind of a form of public speaking, but we don't have, like, we don't see our audience in front of us. So nope. I can understand standing up in front of a podium in front of all these people having to say, I mean, I would probably break my, my voice would break. Mm-hmm. And, like, uh, what's really cool, like, what was I saying? Hang on, sorry. Yeah. So... What was he saying? Hang on. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it happens, man. Hey, we've been chatting for over two hours, three hours, so it's okay. Mm-hmm. I understand. It's okay. It's good. We're doing well, I think. We're doing all right. But Vancouver, it's... Uh, Vancouver's in the, in the nowhere zone. But now Buffalo? Let's see who this Buffalo guy is. Noah Ostland is who they got. Noah Noah Ostland from Sweden. We forgot to check out uh, Lakari Mackey too. We'll check him out after. Yeah. We kind of went off course there with Vancouver there. So that's... yes. So he's from Sweden. Eighteen the... again. Yet again, another. Well, this guy's really light. Ooh. Ooh. 5'11", 6, 163. That's light. <laughs> that's, Eat a cheeseburger, that's small. kid. Have some protein. Eat, eat some chicken. <laughs> Go to McDonald's. Grab a meal. Go to Get the some gym. calories on that body. <laughs> the gym is your friend. Like, Wow, that is a light play. That's a small center, man. That's got to be like your like, fourth line center-ish. I mean, I'm not an expert, but 163, 5'11". I mean, I'm sure he's got some. He's got talent, but that's small. Whew. Light for sure. He's gonna be all speed, right? So, and he's on a big rink, so I'm sure he's gonna be all speed. They are pronoun- pr- uh, they are pronouncing the Jim Gregory Award to the GM of the year. That was who won it. Oh, nice! They're okay. they're letting Sarah Savard uh, announce the award. Oh, nice! Or player, GM, captain, a bajillion Stanley Cup winner. <laughs> All guys for that. I love the translation. I just looked at the uh, the feed, and it's for Sarah Savard. It said Sarah Savard. <laughs> Sarah Savard. 
Just like Batman returned. <laughs> Instead of returns. Batman returned. I mean, Batman returns. <laughs> well, that's okay. This is the fun part, right? You get those comedy, comic relief. For sure. So who so who won the award? Did he say yet? He's no, he's still talking. He's a very slow talker. I'm not gonna lie. Uh yes. Can you hear it? <laughs> I can kinda hear it. He's also almost 80 years old, the man. So Julian Brisebois is nominated. Oh. oh, for him, yeah, nominated. Well, Tampa, I mean, he should. He built a good team. No, oh, great team. Chris Drury. I don't know how he can be GM of the year. That's Jeff Gorton's team. That's how it works. You know that. Joe Sackick, of course. Who do you think deserves it with those three nominations? Breezebois, Sackick, or uh, I don't think Drew oh, is. Oh, Sackick. or Sackick. Sackick. I'm all Sackick. Sackick. I like Joe Sackick. I like I like win. Joe Sack. Did he win? Well, he won the. I mean, he won the cup, right? He right, but Julie I'm just saying, does the cup. right? Oh. Should be Joe Sackick. That's my opinion. The winner is the winner. Joe, Joe Barnaby Joe. As it should be. He built a phenomenal team. Look at them. Look how deadly. <laughs> best team in the NHL and the and the as in season and in playoffs. According to Daryl Sutter, the first round was a waste of eight days anyway. So, <laughs> whoever plays Colorado in the first round, I feel bad. I mean, that's a waste of eight days. <laughs> it was done in seven. <laughs> I know. Isn't that amazing? I love that guy. I love his statements during the playoffs. That kind of gave me a. Some comedy relief after Toronto got knocked out. I was always looking and forward to what Mr. Sutter had to say next day. He says it's so dry, but he's so serious. It's not even sarcasm. It's He's being honest. Oh, he was brutally honest. <laughs> but he's always brutally honest. I, I like, like I said, I told you that story one time when uh, they he was asked about Drew Goudreau playing his 500th NHL uh, game. Yeah. They're like, what do you think of uh, Goudreau's 500th game? Well, I hope it's better than his 499th. <laughs> or whenever they talked about, or whenever they talked to the guy, the reporter asked him about ask, uh, pulling Markstrom from the goal. He said, "What did you What did you happen to say about Mark to Markstrom on the bench when you when you pulled him?" He said that so and so's going in. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever the um. Their backup is their uh, yeah. Valid Valadar Vladar Vla Vladar Vladar yeah, Vladar is going Vladdy or Vladar is going in. That's all he said, yeah. and that's when the and the and just stopped. That was it. He left the left the podium. Okay. <laughs> the man of but no, the man of many words. <laughs> oh, isn't that amazing? I love I love Daryl Sutter's comments. They're just so good. It's like John John Tortorella goes nuts, and we get to hear them all over again. Now that he's the Philadelphia coach. It's going to be amazing to watch that. So imagine Philly versus him. Oh my God, that'd be great. I think uh, Sackick is quite teary eyed. His eyes are quite red. This is another award in his war chest, man. In his, in yeah. his trophy case. So he's got the Stanley Cup. What twice? Three times, right? He's won three cups. Uh, two. Well, three as three. Two as a player, one as a no, builder. No, I'm saying one as a builder. Yeah, in his life, he's won three in various roles. And I think you know he was crazy. Cra Colorado has been in the Stanley Cup Finals three times, and they have three Cup wins. Yeah, they were three for three. Now, whenever, whenever um, he's got that one, 
He's got GM of the year. Was the MVP in one of those cup wins when he was a player? I believe um, Patrick Wall won the Conn Smythe in uh, in 03. Right. I believe Sackick won the Conn Smythe in 96 because he had 18 goals in 19 games. Well, and rightfully so. He should. He was the best player on the ice. So, so he's got, sake of argument, he's got that one. He's got now a GM of year award. He won another, a third cup. And he has, and he had the, like, the guy has got his trophy case is pretty much filled with he's whatever. All time. He's all he's got time. it all. He's got it. And he's also and inducted, he, right? He's also, I believe he's won a heart trophy and I believe he's won. Wait, he's got the like, heart. He's got some of those too. I, I don't know if he's got the scoring title, but I know I, that. I think, no, I think he won the, the Bing one year too, or two years. The lady, well, oh, lady Bing. He should have won a few Lady Bings. He's probably one of the nicest yeah. guys you'll ever meet. It, I always loved the story of Steve Avery. I was reading that the other day. Steve Avery was just breaking out into the league. So Steve Avery apparently was breaking out of the league, sitting on the bench, and he was sitting there. And John Avery. Sorry. I, sorry, I keep saying Steve yeah. Avery. Wrong guy. I apologize, everyone. <laughs> yeah. That's my bad. Sean Avery. Sean Avery was with the Rangers, I believe. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, he was. Uh, it, was de- it was Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, because it was a Western, it was a Western yeah. Conference team. Right. So yes. he was sitting on the bench. And Steve Avery was about to say something as as he goes by. Sackick goes by. I guess the pl- one of the players, I think it was either Brett Hall or who, I think it was Brett Hall. It was the Dallas Stars. It, it, anyway, was, it was Brett Hall. It was Hall. And, and it, Hall was, picks, it was in Detroit. Grabs him, right. Grabs him by the jersey, pulls him down, looks at him and said, no one is allowed to speak to Mr. Sackick. And the whole bench nodded. Like, like. I think, yeah, he's right. Like, I, and I think uh, also I I had heard you crazy. refer to him. You know, no, you will refer to him as Mister Sackick. Well, that's what I said. He said that. Yeah, said that. Uh, yeah, yeah. No one yeah, speaks yeah. to Mister Sackick that way. Yes. So, but I just he was I just get a kick out of those stories. I wish um I could find all the tidbits too of when uh, everyone talking about Brett Hull. Yeah. On when he played for certain teams, he was such a joker and such a sarcastic person, but it was very dry and very like rude. Um, I remember actually there was one story that they were talking about where one of his ex teammates was talking. Um, they had a delayed penalty, and yeah. Keenan said, "said Hull, go take the pa- the penalty." He goes, "I don't take penalties," <laughs> and he's like, "No, Hull, go take the penalty." So he went to the box. He was so angry. And then right. and then what happens is the penalty's over. He comes out. The puck's sliding by him. He could have a breakaway. He just lets it go by, and he nonchalantly skates to the bench. He goes, sits down, looks at Mike Keenan, and goes, Brett Hall doesn't take effing penalties. And then just looks at the game. <laughs> Jonathan Lacker... Lecker Mackey. Lecary Mackey. Mackey. You put that. In, very, very Finnish. Very Finnish. Right wing. Yeah, he's very Finnish. Yeah. Right so wing. it might be Yana, Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan. No, maybe. Jonathan Larry. Okay, so he's a right wing. What do we got now? We got Predators. Predators. Predators, oh, thinking... Predators have just sold. They just picked someone. Oh, they picked Joachim Kemmel from Finland. Joachim Kemmel. Kemmel. Joaquim Never, Kemmel. What, what's his deal? Have you heard anything about this guy, him? Yes, this guy, and him and Lambert, Brad Lambert, also from Finland, by the way, um, the two of them were, last year were ranked in the top five in the draft. They dropped to like 17 and 20-something. They were These were scoring machines, and all of a sudden, it just dried up, I guess. Really? Huh. Well, I have to say, I have to say, I don't know. It's that's what happens. These players drop. But anyway, I, I who's up next? Dallas Stars, pick eighteen, number eighteen. Dallas Stars, another oddball team. Another team in team. kind of no man's land. Like they just lost. Well, like yes, they got rid of some of their core with Radulov, but they just lost John Klingberg too. He's going if you he's going for agency. Yes, and where do you think Mr. Klingberg's going? 
highest bidder. <laughs> yeah, I'd say highest bidder. Yeah. Let's see. So Dallas, see, the thing about Dallas is that Dallas is always, they're just, they always give me the impression they're old. Now, I think they're going to be a trading partner for your team. I think Jeff Petrie's going. Said that oh, he's gone. Another he's time. gone. He's gone. You know, he's gone. I'm just saying he's going to go to Dallas. That's where I think he's going. I see Jeff Petrie in a so Dallas do uniform. So I don't do I know where he's going to go. I think he's going to Dallas because he's an American and he wants to go. He's American. Yes? His wife's from Dallas. His wife is from right. Dallas. Well, that that helps. I didn't know that, but that does. So that that'll pretty much solidify it. He has family so there. His wife, family's there. there. They're they're in need, obviously, with Klingberg gone, and they're going to need. They, and they have the cap space, I think, to absorb his money. They can take all his money. No one needs to buy any money out or anything. So I see Petrie going there now. Who do you think would come back from Dallas into Montreal to get rid of that money? They were talking about draft picks and Ty Delandria, but who, I feel like about, they would I don't know Ty Delandria. Who's what's he about? He was the he was a draft pick last year in the top. I think he was like 13th overall or whatever last year or something high pick last year. Um but, uh, yeah, I've heard Ty Delandria's name. I would assume a salary has to come back. You can't just absorb $6 million just like that for a prospect, can you? Oh, you're going to have to take a bad contract back. I mean, you guys can't. Yeah, that's what I'm you're saying. Re you're rebuilding, so you're going to need – you'd yeah. have to eat a little money. I mean, and, you're not going to get big savings. And, but. Because of his age, I don't think you're going to – you're going to just get a prospect, as I said. And you would have to bring take something back, I guarantee. Oh, absolutely. But Dallas is on 100%. the board. And they're, Dallas is on the they board. They might be uh they might be discussing because it's counting down still. So maybe it's the Maple Leafs. Maybe Toronto will make a trade, eh? Wouldn't that be something? Toronto moves up in the draft. Toronto moves up in the draft. They trade Austin Matthews to the Dallas Stars. What? Matthews and that's Barnard the guy. No, stars. no, that, that's the guy. That's the guy on the thing saying. No, I don't think so. I'm just saying. <laughs> Doesn't even finish the thought. That's he can't too even funny. It. They're showing a picture of Noah Ostlin when he was a kid. He's yeah. sleeping on the couch with his skates on. He wouldn't take his skates off. <laughs> that's dedication, man. That's a dedicated <laughs> person. Wow. So here you go. So. Here's the. I just put them up. I haven't put up a team in a little while, but it's interesting to see. Here's their team. So they have Jamie Ben, who's you know a thousand now. He's aging. Always aging. You got Fasca, who's aging. You have got Gurianov, who's their, obviously their, decent. Their future is Lundell, I think. Rup Hints. Or Haskinen, sorry, Haskinen. Haskinen. You got old Joe Pavelski. Gurianov. Yeah, Goran Radulov, who's going to leave. Jason, Nick Robertson's big, much larger brother, Jason Robertson. Yeah, who have you had ever a seen the picture? Ridiculous year out of nowhere. I've, he had two ridiculous years. I picked him up in a draft in a pool last year, just because of his previous year. Just I just took him on a flyer, and he was like one of my main point producers. But I had much. Yeah. I had other players too, but he helped a lot. Yeah, I don't get how like. Nick Robertson is the runt in the family when he's he's so is like, small compared to his brother. He's six inches taller. When I saw <laughs> Dallas Robertson. play, well, Dallas Dallas played Toronto, and the two Robertson brothers met each other in the ice. They got a photo op for it, I think. And I'm like, that can't be his. Oh my god, it's his brother. He looks just like I him, right? They look like, very. It's I like think six, they look very similar. Oh yeah, the, it's like six three and five nine or something. The difference. I know. Well, Robertson's six feet, I think, or six one. Yeah. But his brother's six, two or six so, much larger. Like his brother's uh, Nick Robertson's small though, very small. Well, he's six. Jason Robertson's only six three, but his brother's five right. ten maybe. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's that's like four yeah. or five inches taller. That's huge. Have, yeah. Of course, they have Segay, of course, and in their defense core, minus Klinkberg. Sakara, maybe they have really, really young man Ryan Sa Suter. Sakara, I thought he was—is he still playing? Is or is he on IR? They don't have heart. I mean, unless they have superstar defensemen, we don't know about. I don't see really aside Klingberg. He's the only one. 
don't have much. Well, I pick. I bet they'll pick it, a defenseman. Is Miro Heiskin in the D man, or is he forward? No, he's a defenseman. You're right. Six one. Yeah, that's one ninety. Yeah, that's their that's their number star. one star. That's their star now. Okay, <laughs> no pun intended. That's their star now. Dallas Stars. I've never seen the owner of Dallas before. I wouldn't he looks very really scared, like like terrified. I think and I'm going to put this out on a limb. Jake Ottinger is going to have a regressive year next year. I think he's another Binnington. I think he's another Binnington. But that happens to the most young goalies. That's very common. Yeah. Binnington was supposed to be the next, the next thing, and he. Well, I mean, he's good. Don't get me wrong, but he's had he's had a tough year this year. He had injuries too, but Jordan Binnington was touted as his top guy, and I'm like, okay, well, he's EAC, ECHL goalie. I'm like, maybe? We'll see. Anyway, we've got a cup out the of The next him, so. draft pick for them is Le- Lion Bischel? Leon Bischel? Lion? Another nobody that I don't know. I, or, you know? I, don't, I don't know the name. Never heard of him. What is he, a defenseman, though? Uh, No. Forward? He, he looks like a forward. No. Yeah, he looks like. Yeah, he's a forward. He's a forward. No, he's a D-man. D-man, sorry, D-man. So they picked defense. I figured they would. They don't have yeah. hardly anything on defense anyway. They have two guys. It's, that's it. Knowing knowing Klingberg is gone, you need to you need a D-man right away. You need defensemen. You you don't have your superstar defenseman anymore. Most likely, he's not going to resign. He's going to want big, big, big money. Yes. And, and he's, he's a big, apparently big he's money. a big. Apparently, this kid's a big, he's like a Jamie Alexiak type defenseman. A big stalwart. Big, big stalwart guy. I forgot uh, Pete DeBoer is there now. How does that guy get so many jobs so fast? I don't get it. He doesn't win. Not really, no. Kind of in that point where the draft, where it's kind of like these players are just, you know, they're kind of in the middle. I mean, I'm, of, I'm waiting to see what Toronto does. There are some good players back here, and I've and lots of them that are I've heard of too. It's just, it's not the it's not the craziness like in the first five picks. No, but we knew that going in, right? We knew this draft, the draft would not uh, would be these big names. So Minnesota, Minnesota, Washington, and Pittsburgh are next. Yes, and just so everyone's aware, for days for day two of the draft, we're not going to do a show on it. We're just going to do a review on specific uh, on our two teams, probably of the they are their seven sit two to seven picks. Yeah, yeah, we're not interested in the. We're curious to see what they are, but we're going to do some honorable mentions and, in another show. Because... And I don't. I don't think we can do an all day draft. Well, no, think. no, 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 no. We're not going <laughs> to do that. This is, I mean, this draft, I mean, we have enough content here to cover this part, but I don't believe we'd have enough to cover the other part. And honestly, yeah. the draft, the second round draft, I don't believe, and all those are, I don't even think the televised. I think it's more of a, you just uh, watch a ticker. They did last year. They, they did, did last, last year? year. Okay. I've always yeah, had a hard I time think... trying to find it, but it's just, I don't. It's, hey, more, it's more TV coverage because they don't have anything to put on TV <laughs> at oh, this time. Yeah. It's a it's Besides dead. baseball. Well, baseball is still I said, going. Baseball. It's, it's still very slow, though. Yeah, well, baseball's a long season, right? So, it's a lot of games. Yeah. You know this kid is young when he's got acne. I've been through that. I know what that's about. And yeah, it's a tough thing. So, but either way, he'll he'll come out of it. But oh yeah, yeah. we're at two hours and twenty nine minutes, man. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. No, I think. Um, so I said, who is next? Pittsburgh and Washington, I believe, are coming up. Yes, Pittsburgh, uh, Minnesota. Washington, Minnesota. Minnesota's next. From Los Angeles. So this is a Kings pick that got moved up to 19. Now, I don't know. Oh, this they... is the Arvidsson trade. Oh, no, sorry. The, the Arvid... Fiala trade. No. The, the Fiala trade. From Kevin Fiala. Fiala? Yeah. 
yet. Okay, so what's your view on Kevin Fiala? Now, you had told me that you thought Kevin Fiala was going to be a half, or there was a chance he was going to be a half. Or they were looking yeah, there was, there was talk because they need – they're desperate for cap space because of those horrible buyout contracts oh. with Parise and, and Suter that right. they wanted uh, Weber's contract – because they need cap space, something fierce, and they, there was no way they could afford Fiala either. So there was talk they were going to swap that. Um, but I think they probably chose the, the better option of going with a first round pick to get rid of Fiala. Because, and the thing is with Fiala, what impresses me the most is they actually said, and this was actually said, you can't even say that he was better because of Kaprizov because they only played 85 minutes together in total. In the three Minnesota. So here's the deal. Or I want to start. I know we're live on Facebook and all that. But Krill Kaprizov, what happened there, man? That news coming out of that. I'm not going to go into it because too much because it is a sensitive subject, but with, with what's going on in the world. I think it's but, just a waiting game right now. They don't even know what's going to happen, I don't think. So is he in Russia or on American soil right now? He's on American soil, but I have heard that he's supposed to join the Airborne because he's wanted in Russia. And that will be an interesting stalemate. And the there's talk sure. that when he found out about Fedotov, he ran because he <laughs> illegally bought papers, apparently, and stuff back when he was 17 to get out of the army. Well, it's a draft dodging thing, eh? Yeah. And the and Russians it, it don't was... take well to draft dodging. So. Nope. And, and a state Fedotov, of war. So. Unfortunately, Fedotov um, was expected to come to Philly this year because he wanted to leave Russia. As soon as that happened, uh, CSK Moscow was not happy of losing their player. And he, his uh, the GM of the CSK is good friends with Putin and called him instantly. And a bunch of crazy stuff happened with that guy. Well, it turns out he's now in like the Siberian salt flats doing his military. Yeah, he's way north. He's at the very almost near the North Pole. <laughs> they send us <to> Siberia. <laughs> he's hanging out with the polar bears and the other stuff up there. Not much up there. Ice and polar bears. Whatever. That's about all he can do. <laughs> and some mammoths in the ice. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Wow. Well, talk about wherever he was 48 hours ago to that. Like, geez. Anyway, whatever. That's so, again. That's something. Um, Minnesota picked Liam Ogren. Liam Ogren. Okay. He's a top six forward as projected. Top six. He's a he's a, he's a Swedish kid. Huh. Okay. Top six winger. His projection. Well, if Mr. <laughs> Mr. Kaprizov's not back, he may have to go in because who knows how long that's going to go on for. But anyway, hor what a, and what I'm a curious, turn of events that for that. Contract them. get put on. Well, I'm curious too with the NHL does that contract get put on hold or is it automatically terminated what happens well that's the that's the thing like the guy signed what eight years seven years eight years right he signed eight an eight-year deal with them he signed the max that's I don't know the rules that's a lot of money but I don't know the rules and then he fought for that money it wasn't given to him it wasn't like oh here Kirill here you go they wanted to oh. give him like a two, two or three year extension. He's they like, wanted, no, pay me now or I'm out. Is what he they said. They wanted to lowball him too. It wasn't the max that he got. He was going to get like five or six or whatever. Yeah, and he warned them. He said, "Pay me or I'm leaving." Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Your pardon, folks. I just got to take a piss. So, so who's up next? Washington, I think. Hey, eh? uh, yeah, Washington but they're still, they're still doing their picture and stuff like that. Yeah, well, yeah, it always takes a little while, right? Then they have to see. Washington Capitals, what do you think they need? Center. No, no centers Backstrom, are aging. Right? No Backstrom. Their centers. What do they have for second? Well, Kuznetsov is still there. But, yeah. uh, 
I don't think they have much in the center depth department. So you have Nick Dowd, your old friend, a, Lars Eller. Lar you have Backstrom, Dowd, Eller, and Kuznetsov, and McMichael. No idea that. And Snively. Yeah. Connor him. McMichael, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a McDavid McMichael guy, eh? They always and then there's the... Well, there's the other one too, Alex Lafreniere and L Alex Laferriere. Laferriere, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you got John. You got John Carlson, of course. Then you got Nick Jensen, Orlov, you know, J Justin Schultz. They're D is okay for now. You have TVR, so I mean they're pretty good. J Trevor Rian Reeves, like I would say, I would say their depth in center is aging. They need to get younger there. They're goaltending suspects. So Copley, I Phoenix or Phoenix Copley. Phoenix Copley. Yeah. Copley, sorry. You got Samsonov and Vanacek. Now, Vanacek is an up and down goaltender. He's not consistent. Samsonov's the same. Sam I find their goaltending ever since Holpe left, they've been very needy, needy, medial or menial goaltending. But Vanacek can have amazing games, and so can Samsonov. So I do you keep both or do you get rid of both? Like, what would you do if you're a GM that team with that goaltending? Would you move them? Would well, you get someone new. I think, I think I would just continue with them for now because they're still both young. They're not old goalies. They're still young goalies. No, they're, and they're big. Like like Samsonov, six three two hundred, and the other one's six two one eighty four. So I mean, they're not two hundred thirty five pound uh, goaltenders, but they're not small either. So, nope. and like you said, they're young. Yeah, they're born in 96 and 97. So they're only in their mid-20s, I would say. Yeah. Right? Yes, because 20s, yeah, mid-20s, 24. Yeah, they're 24, 26. 23, 24. Okay. So they still have a long time. To go. I, I would hate to see them give up on them, but it depends on what Ovechkin wants, too, because Ovechkin seems to, like, have control of the team to a point. Well, it seems to me, anyway. When you have a guy like Ovechkin, you have to go for the win. Every time, unfortunately. Wow, this guy's here to win, right? That's what he's yes. there for. So. so, like, you can't waste that opportunity. It's it's win or nothing. It's an all or it's an it's an all or nothing. Yeah, it's basically how he he works at it. So. You get a cool. generational player, and you keep that generational player to win. You don't keep him just to let him rot. Yeah. No, you don't because you can't. You can't. He's like the face of your team, and he's been your face for over a decade. And yeah. he's got you at least one cup. See, now there's a guy. Now, that's what's interesting. So many, I mean, a lot of Leaf fans get upset because Toronto's not breaking through the first round. Okay? The Capitals, it took him, the stat I remember, so the year that he won in 2017, they said that it took 164 different players for Ovi to get his first cup. And his only cup. He hasn't won since. And his team has gone back to a perennial first round exit, maybe second round once in a while. So I see with Toronto and Matthews not. Long story short, it's not easy. Okay? It's not an easy thing to do. And that's why I say with Hab fans in this rebuild, be patient. It will pay off. Rebuilds work. They don't fail. And I don't think he's going to mess this up. I think he's really good. Just to Come to that point. But anyway. So the Cavs picked uh, the, the kid I was talking about, Ivan Moroshnikov. Okay. And he is defense? S wing, winger, scorer. He's a winger? Okay, he's a winger. Okay. They're going with the Russian well, factor, I think. Again? They seem to love their Russians. Well, whatever. The Russians are good. I mean, look at OV. Look at all the other ones. They're all, they all produce. So mm -hmm. Orlov, uh, OV. I mean, Orlov's defense, but. Orlov, OV, all those guys, they're all good. Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov, yeah. I mean, there's a long list of names. But they've always picked their guy. But okay, neat. Okay. Washington, now it's Pittsburgh's turn. Yep. Now, what do you think of the old Pittsburgh Penguins? Pittsburgh Penguins are a team in flux, I think. They're kind of they trying to keep to their window good. open. They're, they're keeping their old core together, it looks like, but um, I don't know how many more wins you can get from that. <clears throat> I don't either. I don't know how they're going to do it. 
I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know. I mean, they're obviously going to try to keep Malkin if they can. If they can't keep him, they'll let him go. You still have Crosby. Yep. You know. They just re, re up Latang for too much for too long. Well, the player I like on that team, he got hurt. He got hurt two years ago, and he was really good. What is his name? He's a forward. Penguins. Let's see what the Penguins. He was very, very good, and he produced a lot of points and a lot of different things. His name is not Raquel, not Johnny Becker. Jake Gensel. There it is. Jake Gensel. I like Jake Gensel. I think he's a great player. He's a little small, but he's a very speedy winger. And he can he's play just, well with he, he can he can uh he gets good chemistry with Crosby. And he just upped his deal too. He just got a new deal as well, Gensel, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty yeah. sure he just signed a new contract. And like a good one too, like a, a number of years term contract. Like they don't want to let him go. So Mario did interview the, the the kid that the Capitals took, so I'm wondering if that has a little bit to do with it. Oh, cool. You know Maybe. the rivalry between Pens and Washington. <clears throat> oh, that's it. He's Mario's got his influence on the team, even though he doesn't own it anymore. Fenway owns it now, but he does yeah. own the team. I think he no, he owns a portion. I think he's still. That's he's right. Still yeah, a sorry. Yeah, you're right. He owns a small. Well, why wouldn't you? He's still a min minority owner. Why wouldn't you just keep a stake in it for your your uh, for your own like investments? Like why not? He it's a winning brand now. He saved that organization he from bankruptcy twice. He twice. Did. And all they did is they signed the ownership over to him because they owed him thirty million bucks. And they couldn't sixty pay million him. bucks actually. Was they it owed 60? Him sixty? I thought it was thirty. Okay. Sixty million dollars, and he took over the team. And he's like, "I'll play a couple seasons just to help these kids." And seats filled up again. Mario, I mean, let's be honest, Mario, Mario Lemieux. That guy could put butts in the seats, no problem. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget the day that he came back to and played Toronto, got six nothing, and he—I think he got like five points in that game, and it was first game back was, after his cancer. Five. I thought it was five three, and he had five. He had two goals, three assists no, in that game. No, 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 no. It was six nothing. No, that was that was after his three year retirement. Oh, I'm sorry. The other time. <laughs> yes. No, I'm talking about the three year retirement one. The if it was five two. Mario had two goals, three assists, and that season he finished with over seventy points in forty games and thirty four goals when nobody could score a goal per game in that it was time. All clutch that was like, it was all clutch and grab, and that was where they were it all It was like 99, 98-99 yeah. or something when he came back. Well, there's a famous picture of him there. They have two guys hanging off his arms, and he still yeah. put the goal in. Still yeah. put the goal in. <clears throat> like, incredible. But Yeah. Well, yeah, that return game where everyone's like, you know, he hasn't played in three years. I don't know what to expect. Didn't look like he missed a, a step. When you're a superstar, you don't. It's like riding a bike. Just get on and go. And he Regardless of retire, age. when he had retired, it had nothing to do with he wanted to retire. It was injuries. Yeah. Oh, his body failed him. That's all there is to it. The bad back. He had a guy who tied his skates. He couldn't tie his own skates. He didn't have the ability to because his back was so bad half the time, I was told. And he had a, like a guy who would do that for him. He had... I mean, the, the cancer treatment, the back, he had knee issues, shoulders. I mean, the guy was bashed and banged around all the time. And he was also, he what, never six, had five? any res He never had any respect. No. Not like the, Wayne Gretzky. Well, a different era, right? We were getting into that clutch and grab era, and it just wasn't fair. I mean, I still think Mario Lemieux was the only guy in the entire NHL. Maybe McDavid now, but before McDavid... He was the only guy I thought that would probably catch up to Gretzky's records because he was just so good. So. Mm -hmm. Ron Hextall walks up, says, we're going to let uh, Chris Letang do the announcement with his glasses crooked. <laughs> Old Ron Hextall. Oh, God. I remember, I remember when Podfain pummeled I, him. I remember when Wah pummeled him. Uh, Wah, Wah pummeled him, and so did... Uh, 
And so did, well, Pod Bay is the famous one, right? That's the famous yeah. fight. Okay. And uh, I remember when I worked at uh, a hotel where the players stayed all the time, I was in the gym working on a computer there because I was the tech guy at the hotel. I look over, I see Hex stretching in the gym with his tongue hanging out like, as he's stretching, I'm like, he's just as weird in regular life as he was on the ice. <laughs> It's true. Goaltenders, some goaltenders are just a little out there, man. I mean, look at Bro not Bobrovsky, yeah. the other Brzgalov. Remember him? Remember his space his cadet? <laughs> Literally, a cosmonaut, man. And another flyer, I might add. Yep. Was it the? And then they've got rid of him. What was it, Bobrovsky or or was it Brzgalov? They got rid of after like one. Because I know Brzgalov was with Columbus for a while. It was brief. It was both, actually. They did it to both. They fired both goalies after one playoff exit. In one season. One season. like, And they signed him to monster contracts. Ten-year. A ten-year deal. Yeah, it's like Bob. Well, Bob's still working on that one. Yeah. Yeah, Florida's um, so paying it. Now. Pittsburgh took Owen Pickering. Owen Pickering, Ontario. I've heard of that kid. Not high. No. And what's his deal? I think he was on. I think he was on. He was supposed to play on Team Canada this year. Have a look at Owen Pickering. Let's see what he's about. <laughs> surprise, surprise! Owen Pickering's nickname is Pickle. It's a shocker. <laughs> <laughs> Owen Pickering, okay, from Swiss. <laughs> Owen. Pick Ah, right, look at that. What are the odds of now you want to hear something cool? Just a, a side note. Sure. Joe Sackick's birthday's today. Oh, well, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Sackick. But you know what? Isn't that cool? Wins the GM award and he's it's his birthday. He is a six foot four, 181 pound defenseman, this Owen Pickering, 18 years old. Okay, so he's a big boy. Oh yeah. Pittsburgh could use that because they're small. Latang's not very big, is he? Uh, Latang, he's uh, yeah. I think he's six foot. He okay, six he's one? okay, he's average then. Yep, we'll see. So Pittsburgh's done. So they're done. We're kind of in that tra that part of the draft, as I said earlier. That's kind of like we're in that, like I mean. There hasn't been a Canadian team picked in since the 15th. So according now to we're in 20 seconds. Hockey DB so. Latang is six foot, two hundred pounds. Okay, so he's got a weight. He's got muscle, but he's not. Su he's tall, but not super tall. He's kind of the perfect size for a defenseman. So we have now so Anaheim, St. Break. Louis, and <clears throat> you want to take a stretch? They're on a yeah. Okay, so we'll take us. I'll stay on. I'll stay the live. I'll be right back. But you go for it. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'll stop the, the broadcast for a few minutes, and then we will come back live in a few minutes because I need to stretch as well. So we'll be right back. 